Well, good evening, and we'd like to welcome everyone to the Mountain Thicket, if you will, Legion Field and beautiful Hammond Stadium. And boy, it is gorgeous here, isn't it? Oh, this is this is one of the most beautiful facilities anywhere in in the in the country in the southeast that I've been to. Fabulous facility, gorgeous views. Excited to be here. Th this is a, a like a surprising Fulton team that easily could be, and probably some would say should be, two and two at um, least. I think one place that we would look for tonight um, that the Highlanders can exploit is an undersized defensive line for the Highlanders. It, or for the Falcons. They are very young. There are a, a number of sophomores on this team that are starting right now. I, I've got Carlos Orr rated as one of the best wide receivers in the state in this cycle. I'm a lot higher on him than maybe some national analysts are. He has outstanding size. He's got great speed at that size. He's an excellent leaper. I think he's a guy that could be a difference maker tonight because I don't know that Fulton has anybody they can match up with him one-on-one. -on -one. I think you're going to have to see them try to double him. Yep. I agree with that. Like you said, lots of weapons spread all the way around for those um, Fulton Falcons. So here we are, right ready for kickoff as the uh, Highlanders will be back to receive. I want to encourage everyone to, by the way, keep your eyes on a very athletic. You and I were just talking about him, and you can just see the way that he carries himself. Luke Burkett for these Highlanders. He's mean, and he plays like he's aggress aggressive. Well, you were talking earlier. And there's a kick out of bounds. Boy, you don't want that. As, as, that's a way you do not want to start the game if you're Fulton. Yeah, this is, this is, not, a, this is not a Highlanders team that you want to give a short no. field to. Now, let's, we've talked about everybody tonight. You know, we've talked about Orr. We've, played, we've talked about Brady Hammonds. We've not even talked about yet Tegan Avera and what he means to this team. And he has just been, he's been the bell cow. He's been the guy that everything has run through so far. Yep. So, Hammonds back. I'm looking for Tavera. I don't see him, but they're in a five receiver set right now. And it throws to Orr. Orr picks up. Oh, tackled immediately, but we'll give him three yards on that. That three yards, decent drive starter, gets you moving, gets you ahead of the sticks. We want to thank East Tennessee Spine for sponsoring our kickoffs tonight. And, of course, Claybo's Campground with the first down. Claybo's Campground located in the Great Smoky Mountains in beautiful Pigeon Forge. So, after the gain of three, well, we'll say five, actually, closer to five. Tiga there back in the field now. Hammonds looks. He's got a man. Yes, who? Orr. Orr with a set. What a great play by Carlos Orr. We're waiting to see if he's is he in. And he, they are going to mark Carlos in. Boy, the focus and the concentration on Carlos Orr to pull that in. That was absolutely a dime by Brady Hammonds. He just threw that thing up, let Carlos go get it, or got his hands out in front of it, was able to come down, stay in bounds. That's exactly how GP wants to start this game. So after that big gain, that will move the ball all the way to the Falcon 25-yard line. We will have a Claybos Campground first down. Whit Whaley goes into motion. Handoff. Oh, oh what a great open field tackle there by Raymond Thomas. Thomas just fired in, textbook, you get a big strong back like Avera, hit him low, take the legs out, chop him down. He came in like he was shot out of a cannon, took out Avera's legs, no chance to keep grinding or get extra yards, excellent defensive play. So we'll mark that a gain of one, or a loss of one that is. It's gonna bring up second down and 11 here at the 10 minute mark. So two receivers to the left, and Whit Whaley got him. Played route, and oh, oh, just out, out of the range there. Thompson for the Highlanders. You got Boy, it's, it's nice to have a Kai Thompson though on the other side, away from Carlos Orr, isn't it? it it's nice to have a Kai Thompson, but you got to make that catch. That's yep. a, that was a play designed to go to him. They were trusting him to make a big play right there. He was open. Hammonds put it on the money. He just didn't come down with it. So these Highlanders now facing a, at the 10-minute mark, exactly facing a third down and 11. You wonder how much that fence right on the back line on that end zone played into that, Ron, him pulling yeah. up. 
So Hammond's back with three receivers to his left. He looks that way. Oh. Good stand right there by the Falcons. Of course, that's not going to be an interception despite what you might see on the screen. Fulton with good tight coverage there. They were able to get the pass break up, get it defended. And now, you know, decision time for Coach Wagner and the Highlanders. Do you try to go for this? Because you've had guys open two different times down here. Do you try to kick a field goal for an early well, now they, they do have a very good kicking weapon. And Coach um, Wagner told me, hey, we're looking for some opportunities to kick field goals. And he felt as though that he was good within the 45 yard range so we'll see how that plays out right here well brady hammond's coming back out yeah. it looks like they're gonna go for this that was timeout but yeah coach um wagner told me that he was looking for opportunities for his kicker carlton um gessling to to get involved more and, and perfect by the way on extra points this season is carlton gessling so this is a very interesting call spotted right now and i'd say that's probably what they're talking about you're looking at roughly a 44 yarder, yeah. 44, 45. So you are right at the at, at the, the edge of his edge. range. Yeah. So you're you're asking him to to make a kick that is at the at the edge of his range. The thing about that is, and you, we always talk about this, when you've got to kick one as far as you can, you lose height. It's got to be a yep, lower it's kick. It's got to be a line drive. And you run a risk of getting it blocked. Now, and Fulton's got the athletes to get up and get a low kick. Now, Brandon, I did watch um, Gessling. Uh, before the game. He was hitting from 50 yarders, so he's got the leg. It looks like they're going to give Brady Hammonds another chance. They, yep. GP has had two plays in this in this set of downs where they had the first down yardage. One was a touchdown. They drew it up well. It just weren't able to cash it in. So Tegan Avera in the backfield alongside Hammonds off to his right. Hammonds rolls out to his right. He's got a man open. Oh, my goodness gracious. Whit Whaley was thinking end zone and not pulling the ball into his body. Whitman Whaley had first down yardage. He was going to turn that up and score. Uh, if, if he catches that ball, it's a walk-in touchdown. But you got to catch the ball first. Yep. So that's going to be a turnover on downs. It's also going to give us a Claybo campground first down. Uh, Claybo's campground located in the Great Smoky Mountains in beautiful Pigeon Forge. So that's going to bring these Fulton Falcons to the line of scrimmage and we've got two receivers here split but that's going to be a, oh. a handoff to albert johnson and boy he is dropped quickly and where whaley just dropped the ball a minute ago boy he took a little bit of frustration i believe out on johnson right there well whaley didn't make the initial tackle but he's the one that blew that play up yeah. coming off this near side he came in beat the tackle clean attacked the mesh point it was a handoff it just never had a chance A lot, so, of, a lot of Demon Deacon fans going to enjoy seeing that the next oh, yeah. few years. Allen, Nyland, and Ware on the defensive line for the Highlanders. Very good defensive line. But probably there was a holding right there that got missed as Evan Allen there, the uh, junior chasing and applying pressure, placed tight end on offense for the Highlanders. It's going to bring up third and long, and you know for this Falcon team, you do not want to be in third and long. This is not a team you want to no. put in a position to know you got to throw because they have got a smorgasbord of pass rushers to choose from. Well, we talked about Burkett and Bremer's also over there, and those are two guys that just live to hit. As a matter of fact, Burkett's up, and I think what just called his name, no, that just high there as Mulder's not able to connect with the wide receiver. He was looking for Albert Johnson out there, and it wasn't a bad route, just overthrew him. Yeah, Molden came up and had a nice, did a nice job buying a little bit of time. There were there was multiple pressures, uh, multiple people trying to pressure him coming in there. He was able to get it off, but just a little high. It was a dangerous throw, though. There were four Highlanders around his man. Oh, yeah. And you can't afford to miss those high. So this is going to force the Falcons to uh, kick Joe Moore back for the punt. Oh, oh. Almost blocked. I think they got a piece of that. Well, I saw for GP back there, number 62, Zion Nalen was back there, but also applying pressure was Whit Whaley as well. So um, we'll see after the turnover on downs on the last series what the Highlanders are able to um, to do here. Very good, by the way, very good offensive line in uh, Evan Allen, Resnick, Ware, Nyland, Burkett, and Jackson Case 
who Coach Wagner went on and on about this week. You know, he they, loves Jackson. Oh, Case. loves Jackson Case. And you know, it's not an enormous offensive line, but boy, they are tough as nails. Pound for pound strength. Yes. So Hammonds rides up to his left, looking downfield for a man. He's got Orr open, but dumps it off instead to Whit Whaley, who's able to pick up. We'll see where we mark that at. I'm saying second down and about three. That was an outstanding job by Brady Hammonds to roll out there. I don't know if he felt the pressure coming or if he just was fortunate enough to be rolling far enough to his left not to get hit. Uh, well, not get hit before he let it go because he got lit up when he let that go. Whitman Whaley made a good catch in traffic. So here comes GP out already in Falcon territory. Second and short here, Ron. So Hammond's back with Avera off to his side. Avera looking for space. And I think that's going to be enough, though, for the first down. That'd be a Claybos campground first down. Yep, they're moving the sticks. Tegan Avera just runs so hard. Uh, I've, I've been so impressed with him on film, but he runs with bad intentions. Yep. And he's very rarely brought down by the first man. You know, this is, um, for those that are keeping up, this is a um, 3A school in Gatlinburg-Pittman. And, you know, at the end of the day, it always comes down to, for Gatlinburg-Pittman or Chucky Doak, anyone else, else in this uh, region, what are we going to do with Alcoa? Well, take a look down here. we got a fun matchup. Orr looks like he's matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Let's see if he can break the tackle right here. Oh, no, he is brought down. That Boy, he dragged him, though, for probably another seven to eight yards. Latavian Wilson there on defense. Hey, credit Latavian Wilson. You know, we, when you see a guy like that, the, the, the thought is often to go focus on the stiff arm, focus on the guy getting put down. He hung on. He yep. could, he could have let go. He hung on, scrapped, and got got or down because if he doesn't get or down, that that may be a touchdown. Yeah. Or six foot five, hundred eighty pounds. But one of the things that we heard from the coaching staff here at GP is he's deceptively strong. Oh. The Illinois commit. What? Well, watch his film, and you will see the strength that he has. Looks like they got him one on one again. So still looking. Jo oh, oh, oh my almost made a miraculous one handed. Um, stab there to come up with that. If he had caught that, this place would have lost its collective mind. And I want to tell you, and you saw it the same way that I did, as he's a little bit shooken up, Hammonds took a thump right there. That's the second time Fulton has laid a really, really clean, laid a clean lick on Brady Hammonds, but that's the second time Fulton has been able to get a lot of pressure on him. Fulton's blitzing like crazy. They're playing yep. man on GP and daring them to pick it up and be able to get it out in time to take advantage downfield. GP's had the opportunities, but seems like Brady's having to throw it just a few beats before he wants to. he to. wants to to get his feet set. So, handoff there to Varen. He's got some space right there as Luke Burkett sets an edge and he drives it all the way down to about the 11-yard line. Boy, the edge was set there by Burkett. And let's also give some credit to the tight end, Evan Allen, there Man, as they both set the edge. The, the block that Burkett got on the kick out out there, you know, just – you want to talk about blocking a guy into the concession stand. He got a hold of that guy and just wrecked that Fulton defender. And that's a huge play for GP because that's the first burst play, first chunk play we've seen from Avera. They've got to have him if they want to win this game. So if you're just tuning in with us right now, um, still no score here with six minutes and 20 seconds left. Hand off. Oh, Hammonds keeps. And let's see, he makes a good move towards the inside, but is brought down by Dexter Lewis in the open field that saves the touchdown. But after the Claybos campground first down, that's going to bring up second down and about two. They can get a first down before the touchdown. Well, and when you, again, we talk about the weapons that Gatlinburg Pittman has. You have to worry about Orr, Whaley, yes. Avera, and then you have Brady Hammonds pulling it out and running it now, too. Seems like a good time for the, nope, keeper to Avera, and Avera just walks in. Ron, that's a touchdown in touch football. They didn't get a hand on him. Yep. He, that, uh, that Sevier County Utility District touchdown, I could have gotten through that hole, Ron. Well, that, you, that offensive line blew an alley open. noticed that Dexter Lewis was pleading to the official that he had been held, but to no avail as that puts the Highlanders on the board first at the six, I'm sorry, the five minute and 24 second 
Our view is a little obstructed tonight at the scoreboard as the tree branches kind of hold that back. Kessling stays perfect on the season and makes the new score the Highlander 7 and the Falcon 0. Hey, while we're uh, down a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about our player of the week last week. Um, as we were up last week with Northview, Evan Pottinger, and a miraculous 51 thousand yes i said 51 thousand votes of the folks who went online and participated we want to thank sharps plaque masters we also want to thank playbos campground for sponsoring our player of the week but 51,000 votes we want to thank everyone who came online and participated in that with us last week um, and we want to congratulate evan as well such a outstanding young man he's a guy we've had a chance to see at northview He's been a, a big time player for them for, for three years now. We've gotten to see him grow. So congratulations to Evan on a, on a well-deserved Player of the Week award. So Gessling back for the kick. And uh, deep for those Falcons is uh, Joe Moore. And also Dexter Molden. No, I'm sorry, that's a number two. It'd be Derek Smith back deep. Doesn't matter, it's kicked out of the back of the end zone and that's gonna set up the Falcons at the 25. Gotta love any time you can get a kickoff into the end zone. That uh, that kickoff brought to you by Tennessee. East Tennessee Spine. Yes, sir. Thank you. That was a uh, that was an impressive kickoff. And right now, Ron, I think one of the things we're still early here, but field position has been a big factor in this yep. game. GP had was able to benefit from the kick out of bounds earlier. They had great field position. Fulton got backed up. GP second drive, great field position. Fulton's back deep again now. So they like this two receiver stack out here to the right side closest to us. Latavius Wilson back there fakes the inside and is looking for has got a little bit of space and then is up and ended by number 32, Elijah Brimmer, as he shoots that little bit of a hole they had there and thumps. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you the guy that, again, he, he didn't end the play, but he blew the play up, was number one, Ben Reese for Gatlinburg-Pittman. Yep. He came off this near side. GP sees something that they like in that edge blitz. Reese came absolutely scot-free in there. Even though it was a read play, he wasn't putting the brakes on. Uh, ran the quarterback all the way down, was right on his heels when he made that tackle. So four receiver set here as they continue in that stack. Johnson got some space and uh, brought down there by Ben Reese, as you were just talking about him. What that's going to do, though, is going to bring up a Claybos campground first down. And that at the four-minute mark, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, I think that was the first first down that Fulton has had tonight. That's first first down the Falcons have picked up. Uh, Ben Reese is a guy that when we've talked to, to Coach Wagner, he has, he's brought up as a guy that he compares to Whitman Whaley. Feels yeah. like he may be the next guy up. Johnson handoff again, but boy, the Highlanders close quick on that. And they're again, you know, not making the, the tackles, Luke Burkett, but turning the play inside where his guys can finish it off. Well, sometimes when you're playing that defensive line, your job is not to make the tackles. Your job is to blow up the offensive yep. line and blow up the plays. You can be an you can be an all uh, all American type player and not make a lot of tackles on that D line if you're constantly causing havoc. Nose tackle for the Highlanders is Zion Nyland. Boy, he is uh, he is on the plus side, and that's one of the things that um, Coach Wagner talked to us about uh, how much improved Zion Nyland has been. Um, and the fact they try to get him some breathers, they're still trying to get him in football shape right now, but boy, you can just see um, that kid can plug a hole. He, he absolutely can. Here, Fulton gets flagged for a false start, going to back them up five yards. I feel bad for him right there because that was probably the, yes. the cleanest shotgun snap they've had all night. Molden was able to, to take that. Looks like he was going to be able to drop back clean. He's been having to kind of been, been doing a little bit of knuckleball catching tonight. You know, this uh, we talked about it. It's a 3 4, but they uh, bring that Jack linebacker up quite a bit. So, Molden looking around. He's nice got screen. a man out for the screen right there, and a the flag is down, thrown down at the 25 yard line. This will be probably either a hold or with this being a screen play, it wouldn't be surprised it'd be a legal procedure or a man downfield that shouldn't have been. Going to be holding on the Falcons. Yep. And again, we had. Fulton's coach, we, you had talked yep. with him earlier, said they kept shooting themselves in the foot, got back-to-back -back penalties on what would have been Positive plays, plays good games. Good. Yep. 
keep in mind that this is a very young Falcon team, but um, boy, you can't play behind the sticks. This is a Falcon team. You can see the athletes. Oh yeah, I mean, you can. Yep. The raw talent is absolutely there. It's just going to be a matter for this coaching staff of getting them some experience, molding them and developing them. But this Fulton team, I mean, they have athletes for days. Yeah. I, and I take a look at big number 74 for Fulton walking off. That's a, that, that is a gentleman I would like to run behind. So three receiver set right there with Latavius Wilson, Dexter Lewis, closest to you on the screen. Golden handoff to Johnson. Johnson tries to find room. There's Luke Burkett. In on the play, Evan Allen also on that play. And, boy, you, when Burkett stands you up, he stands you up. When Luke Burkett's one of those guys that we talked about this uh, in the in the pregame, Ron. He hits you with bad intentions. Yes. He, they, they told him, hey, you can come out he's, here, you can hit guys as hard as you want to, and not only is it not frowned on, we encourage yeah, it. He's, and he embraced it. He's one of those guys that, you know, when you and I played and it was time for warm-ups, you didn't want to go up against him no. in warm-ups. You, you did not want to see him. Nope. Molden dropping back, trying to have a receiver out. Let's see how well this closes. Oh, that should have been a block in the back, and it was not called on Whit Whaley. Well, now let's see here. Do it. No, nope. There is a flag down on that block in the back because that was about as obvious as you could ever see as far as a bo block in the back. Well, it could have been the, uh, to be fair, it could have been the same referees from that Tennessee Austin P game last week that uh, wouldn't have been stunned on that. But that was a, that was a pretty clear block in the back, and it was not only was it a clear block in the back, I'm, it was I'm, the block that sprung him. I'm gonna tell you right now, you just insulted these TWSWA officials right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a fair comparison because these officials actually can see, whereas those officials last week, I'm not sure they saw anything. <laughs> but how would you That's like to be have fourth to and Carlos 11? Or no, Tegan nope. You just try to stay away from off the low snack. A boy just about came in, and this is just one of those. <laughs> This is one of those ugly kicks, but works out very well as he turns the field and takes it all the way down to the 25. That's going to be close to about a 50-yard kick it's about after 50, the roll. That's about a 50-yard punt, and about 25 yards of it was yes. on the roll. Uh, right now, if you're, but, but it was the right thing to do for GP. You don't want to jump on that. If you don't feel that clean or you bump it, you've got Fulton down there, and you can get turned over. So we are still on the back side of the first quarter with a minute 54 left as GP is up seven to nothing. Worst field pos position GP's had yes. all night, Ron. And it'd be interesting right here to see how the coaching staff here for the Highlanders come out and how aggressive they are. I don't know. I think they trust these guys. Well, this is where it's so beneficial to have Tegan Avera off to your shoulder if you're Brady Hammonds. Blitz is coming. So Whaley in motion, probably serve as fullback. No, they're looking to throw. Oh, and you know that's um. Sometimes you just do that and live to play another down, if you will. Well, it seemed like it was a very. It seemed like GP wasn't set going into that no. play well. Now Fulton brought that blitz. GP initially picked it up. Credit to that Fulton front. They kept fighting, and they were able to, to get back there and, and yeah. get the sack. So this almost looks, well, no, they do go to a little bit more spread. As Ty Thompson goes all the way out. Avera trying to jiggle and wiggle, but not much there as he... Um, We'll bring up third down, and let's call it about 15. Just a good, safe play call down there. Your last play was a was a big loss. Could have been a lot worse. I think Brady Hammonds yeah. was probably smart to not try to force that ball anywhere, just slide down and eat it. Uh, at this point, you just don't want to give Fulton great field position. No, not at all. As the clock continues to tick, close to 30 seconds, and the um, Highlanders are facing third and 12. Looks like GP having a hard time lining up again, Ron. Yeah, three receiver stack. One on the bottom over here. Hammonds rolls out to his left looking. Fires, oh, spins a little bit. He's still going to come up short there as Tavarius Allen, linebacker, comes up and is able to make the hit after a gain. Oh, of about seven yards. But that's going to bring up fourth down and about six, and that's going to bring on the punt team. Well, 
As excited as Fulton is going to be to get off the field and get that third down stop, especially after that sack on first down, uh, you got a Falcon linebacker that is not going to enjoy no. going to the film room and watching Brady, uh, Brady Hammond spin away from him. Well, what that will do, Brandon, is that's going to put an end to our first period. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our first commercial break of the evening. And uh, once again, for your high school sports, your score here and the mountain thicket, if you will, is Gatlinburg Pittman 7 and Fulton nothing. Stay tuned with us, and we'll be back in just a moment. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Market and Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. Where'd you get that grin right above your chin? Top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. Bacon and Company is a family owned and operated company that's been in Knoxville, Tennessee since 1925. Because we're a full service operation, um, we have product design and development, printing, embroidery, sewing. We have fulfillment, warehousing, and then shipping you know, to our end user or customer. When someone comes into Bacon and Company, you want to fulfill their needs, what they want, and we'll do everything we can in our power to make sure they, that they leave happy. At Sevier County Electric System, we know that when the power goes out, it's important to you to have power restored as quickly as possible. That's why we've introduced the Power Action Line. As soon as you call the Power Action Line from a phone associated with your electric service, we know immediately that your power is out. The Power Action Line lets us answer up to 1,200 calls per hour, so we can make sure and identify all outages, even after major storms. We track those outages through our integrated mapping system, which provides our operations center a better understanding of where the affected areas are located and predicts probable starting points that helps our crews begin looking for the problem. Our whole goal is to get your power back on as soon as possible. We'll even call you back to make sure your service has been restored. At Sevier County Electric System, we want to take care of our customers, and that's what we do every day. Sevier County Electric System, we are the power behind our community. Just call 865-774-6300. Where'd you get that grin? Right above your chin. Top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Market and Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. And we're back, and uh, the Falcons are marching, although we just did see Whit Whaley throw a kid about seven yards in the backfield. Yeah, Whitman Whaley did a really, really nice job. Nice throw there by Motor out to Latavius Wilson. And good drive right here for these Falcons. Good drive for the Falcons. I think they wound up 
very late calling that pass incomplete. Did they? Oh, wow. Well, we've got also got a flag in the backfield too, Brandon. Let's see what this is. Hard to see a flag on that uh, on that Highlander helmet that over the other 50. Yeah. But that's going to bring up third down and 10, I believe, with nine minutes left here before the half. And that is holding. And same song, same verse. The Falcons backing themselves up with penalties. And you, again, this is a, a Fulton team. You can see the athletes. They've had a yes. really nice drive going. They've been at, they've been moving the chains on the ground, in the air, and penalties are, are setting them back again. So that's going to change that play from about third and six to second down and 20. And um, Johnson remains in the backfield as they have a three-receiver set. Interesting thing about this Falcon team is no tight end. So Smith is able to ride out. Oh, yeah, Pittman Brandon. Is extremely fortunate that that was not called a late hit. Yeah, that, that should have been a late hit. That uh, absolutely should have been a, a late hit. And the the Fulton sideline is not happy about no, that no call. No. Well, that is a that is a bad call to miss because he was well out of bounds. Yeah, Jimmy Rowan, offensive coordinator for these Falcons, was <laughs> jumping on the sideline, wanting to get the officials' attention. I'm not sure the official ever turned his head over to even recognize him. Ah, you know, when when we can see it from up here, I have a hard time yes. believing they miss it on when they're right down there. But that was a that was a, a bad mistake. That should have been a free 15 for the Falcons. But for all that, brings up third down and 14 for the Falcons, and they get a little conservative. But works out pretty well for him as um, Raquan Womble, we've not called his name yet. Raquan Rumble, uh, second back there after Johnson, kind of weaves there for a gain of about 10 yards. Unfortunately for the Falcons, that's still going to bring up fourth down and nine. Yeah, he picked up, picked up a lot of yards on that draw play. They kind of caught GP looking for the pass. They were able to pick some of it up. GP closed out, but that was a difficult young man to bring down. And again, you're kind of in no man's land if you're the Falcons here. This offensive line for the uh, Falcons, led by the two Cash brothers is, and uh, Burnett, have done very well holding up against this very good GP line so far. Well, right there, Womble couldn't quite hold his water. He started leaning a little too far early. Yep and wound up taking that little hop step and they got the flag. I promise you that the Fulton coaching staff's going, you can see that, but you can't see our guy getting smoked in the bench. And yep, so if, if you're keeping up at home, that is the sixth penalty on the night for these Falcons. Mm. Not, not making a difficult game any easier for themselves. No. That's gonna bring up fourth down and 14, but the Falcons will go for it here. Molden back, looking, and he's got pressure. Nyland trying to chase him down. And that's going to be Brimmer grabs him, Burkett grabs him, and a host. And they are going to end up, I would gather, Brandon, from the spot about 12 yards short of the first down. That was a really solid run and a solid effort. Yeah. For a minute, I thought he was going to break that. There was a, a Highlander in close pursuit just in his hip pocket that couldn't quite catch him. As the rest of the GP defense swarmed in, he had to slow up to try to avoid them, and that made the opportunity for them to get the tackle from behind. Now, as we sit here again, 36-yard line for GP, good field position again. So, out come those Highlanders. Good size offensive line, we've already talked about. Tavera bounces outside, makes that one move, and picks up about seven or eight yards after the Claybo campground first down. They are abs. This Gatlinburg Pippen offensive line is absolutely blowing, not holes. Yes. They're blowing alleys open for Tegan Avera to get into. And if you give a back like that, that kind of space and that kind of head of steam, if the first time he's encountering somebody's the second or third level, that is that is a bad recipe for Fulton. And you know you have to to tip your hat to these Falcons. Boy, they're doing all they can defensively to keep themselves in this game. Bad snap and Hammonds very smartly simply falls on the ball instead of trying to pick it up and do something. Well, and Fulton was blitzing off his blind side. If he doesn't fall on that, number six for Fulton is probably looking at a scoop and score in a tie ball game. Uh, Hammonds dropping on that was was a smart, smart thing. 
Uh, most folks from the Gallenberg Pittman uh, area know that this field is named after Brady Hammonds. Um, granddad a long time coach he was here for about 48 years so he's got the genetics in him doesn't oh, yeah. he well he's got that highlander blood too so that's going to bring up third down and 12 as hammond's oh we've had some drops tonight from these highlanders well and that's a that's a very 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 rare drop by carlos, carlos or Orr. he does not miss many i'm going to give brady hammond's a lot of credit on that he faced pressure from the Fulton defense. He was rolling out to his left. He got his shoulders around, which is a right-handed quarterback is one of the most difficult things you can do is roll to your left, set your shoulders, and throw on time. He put it right on Orr's hands. It was a tight window. He got it there, but Orr couldn't come up with it. That's a rare drop for him. So Gessling back for the punt. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you that he had Reese and he just simply missed him. If he hits Reese, he's still running. He is. He bumps his head on the goalpost. There was nobody on that Fulton team was ready for that fake. No, that little seam route was wide open. The, the only man that may have had a chance would have been the man back for the return. As it is, huge opportunity yep. for the Falcons. They're Best field position of the night for Fulton. Fulton coaching staff is going to take a timeout, settle everybody down. Re they realize the opportunity they got here. And while we, um, while they're doing that, let's go ahead and do it ourselves. We'll take a break, and the score still remains Gatlinburg Pittman seven, and the Fulton Falcons zero. Do stay tuned with us. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Market and Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. Where'd you get that grin right above your chin? Top your day, top your day. with a smile at Andy's. Top your day, top your day. with a smile at Andy's. Top your day. Top your day. So we're back as after the turnover on the uh, fake punt right there, the Falcons will take over. We'll see what they can do with this great field position. Johnson Whittlin. Oh, he breaks the tackle. There, I don't know how he got out of there. As Whaley had him in the backfield, but um, somehow Johnson's able to whittle away. And you know, it's one of the things that Coach McMillan told me um, about him. You know, he doesn't have the real breakaway next level speed, but he's got that twitch and that quickness you look for, as, as along with the great vision well, that a ton Johnson of has. To Johnson, there, Whitten Whaley's not a guy that misses a lot of no. tackles. He ran him clean over. So that's going to bring up second down and about four for the Falcons. High snap, but he's able to get down as Johnson continues to whittle. Burkett once again meets him and stands him up and pushes him back. Uh, number 50, Graydon Ware, the defensive end, also involved in on that play. As well as Fulton is running the ball right now with the success they're having, I can only imagine how they would do if they were able to get these snaps in clean because that one little hop step is throwing the timing of a lot yep. of these runs off. So four receivers sad as Johnson's able to wiggle once again and finds him open field, and he's going to score. No, wait a minute. Let's see if we get an indication. No, they're going to mark him just short. So that's going to bring up a Claybos campground first down. I thought he was in, Ron. I think he was. I think that ball got over before his knee hit the yep. ground. So what a run by Johnson! Looked yeah. like he was stopped in the backfield, spun off, and then there was. He comes out of that spin and looks up, and there's nobody between him and that yellow yellow part of the field. And you know what we're seeing right here is is a, a Gallenberg Pittman team that's been pretty dominant, but this is maybe getting ready to be a tie game right here. Snap again, once again high. Ball is loose, and Ben Reese just runs, and he's still going. He's down to the 40. And, and you go, we're going to get blocked in the back. No, no flag yet. As Reese continues to run. And this is going to be a severe county utility. Deal. No, 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 no. We've got a flag, couple flags back here at the 25, and we'll see what this call is. I don't know how, how they missed that block in the back, though. There, there absolutely should have been a block in the back call. Now, <coughs> all the credit in the world to Ben Reese, but right now the most interesting man in this stadium is the guy wearing the, the striped shirt and the yes. white hat. 
because what he's what he does right here is going to be really important and for Fulton Latavius Wilson comes up a little bit gimp and he's still um, limping that's someone you cannot afford to lose if you're the Fulton Falcons so let's see what our call is here Brandon as we're following the official down the middle of the field and we wait for a call Look like holding was the call on Gatlinburg Pittman, I'm assuming, during the return. Turn, that's what I'm thinking, too. We'll have to I'm see. I'm waiting for Brady Hammonds to trot out here, and that's going to tell me what I need to know. But the offensive line is out there here. There comes. Yes, so that tells me all I need to know. This is going to uh, negate the electric run back there by Ben Reese as he pretty much just gets in the backfield on the snap and wrestles the ball away and then takes off, but all of it for naught as the ball's going to be brought back. Ben Reese nearly had a 100-yard fumble return yep. for a touchdown, Yep. And, and it comes off, but I think we want to look at Fulton again right here. You had a great drive. You've been running the ball with Johnson. You get down. Again, I thought he got in the play before. Yep. The next play, you fumble and lose and possession. Let's That's just talk call. about, yeah, let's just talk about how big that touchdown could have been for the Falcons as well. We went from a tie game to now it's GP's ball and you have lost an opportunity to, to tie it up. Well, let's talk about what just happened here as you and I were, were wondering where Brady Hammonds is, and I think he comes out late, and because of him coming out late, he gets a delay of game. Well, if you're, if you're Fulton right now, last night I was down, I had the opportunity to, to go to Pace Academy in Atlanta, watch Tennessee commit Jordan Burns. It was in a very similar situation to this. And Burns came on a ti perfectly timed blitz right up Main Street yep. for a safety. You've got to be mindful of that if you're the Highlanders. Given to Devera. Tavera jiggles and shakes and is able to get all the way out to the 10-yard line before he's brought down there by number seven, Joe Moore. Um, you know, Brandon, is it fair to say that this Highlander team looks a little bit unfocused right now? I don't know so much that they're unfocused as this is a good Fulton team that is squaring up against them. And it's a Fulton team that I think was a touchdown call right there from starting from, to believe they could do this. Yeah, I think that's fair. You know, Fulton, we talked about this earlier. Gatlinburg Pittman probably has the better top end athletes. Mm -hmm. Fulton's the more athletic team top to bottom. So two receivers set as uh, Tavera is looking to move and gets all the way out to the 12-yard line as he um, keeps the legs turning, leans forward. And that's going to bring up third down and we'll call it about five. Tegan Avera is one of those running backs. Every time he gets the ball, yes. if, you're, if you're defending this young man or if you're a fan of the opposing team, every time he gets the ball, your heart jumps in the throat because he looks like he can score every time he touches the you know, ball. And just as a reminder, Hammonds and Orr both are seniors, but Tegan Avera is just a junior, so you know that this Highlanders program is still going to be in good hands next year as, and you, as you know they roll the team out. I know who the show it is going to be in 2024. That's absolutely correct. Well, there's a timeout on the field. I believe for the Highlanders, that's their second. And that is going to bring us down to the three minute and 30 second mark. And looking at our producer, I think we're going to stay with, I think we're going to stay with you here. So, Brendan, kind of talk about where we're at right now, how important it is for Fulton to, to force them off the field on this third down and maybe how important it is for this Highlanders team to get back in rhythm. Well, if you're Fulton right here, you realize you had an opportunity to score. You had an opportunity to tie it up. I think they're going to be really upset when they watch that on replay because from up here, and I may be wrong, but from up here, it looked like that ball was across the goal line before his knee went down. Yeah. I thought he scored. You, you fumble the next play. Gatlinburg Pittman going to be kicking themselves for an opportunity at a 100-yard fumble return yep. for a touchdown. This is a Fulton team. If you can get a stop here, you're going to get good field position. You've got time to come down and score, and now you know you can do it. So, Avera off Hammond's left shoulder in a two-receiver stack. Hammond's looking. Whaley's got room, and Whaley's going to get the first down and fumbles the ball. That was absolutely a fumble. And let's see if he's called down. And they, no, he is not called down, and the Falcons are going to take back over again deep in Highlander territory. That was absolutely a fumble. That was a helmet on the ball instance. Whaley had the ball high and tight. There's nothing you can do about it no. if, you're, if you're Fulton, though, when 
Uh, when you got a fault defender comes in, puts a hat right on the ball, there's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how high and tight you got it, it comes out. Mm -hmm. And now, Fulton, you're at the 26 yard line in GP territory. You got an opportunity here. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't. You don't want to let this Falcons team just keep on lingering and hanging around, hanging around. It's going to come back to bite you. But regardless what that's going to do, it's going to bring up a Claybos campground first down. Claybos campground located in Great Smoky Mountains in beautiful Pigeon Forge. As the Falcons take over here in a four-receiver set, and Johnson in back of Mulder. High snap once again all night long. It's been the issue. Johnson finds a hole and is uh, brought all the way out as the corner. Kai Thompson comes up and shoots the legs out. Johnson, but that's still a good pickup on first down. The Falcons have found their horse. It's Johnson. Yes. Uh, Molden is a is a great athlete. He's a great counter to Johnson. He's a good enough passer. Yep. He's a real athlete in danger with his legs. But Johnson's your horse. And right what now. you see out of Johnson, and it's real obvious. He's got that wiggle that you look for. He got that wiggle, but he he runs bigger than he is. So that's going to bring up second down and mid. Here with just two minutes left in the half. Johnson trying to get outside and he's going to be wrestled down. <laughs> Whaley just doesn't like to tackle. He likes to sling kids around. I am really surprised that... And we got a flag. I was going to say, I'm really surprised that wasn't a horse collar. Yeah. Now we got a second one down. And I think we're going to get back to back here. I think we're going to get unsportsmanlike conduct. And here comes another one because the Highlanders... Oh, getting tossed. Ouch. Yep. Oh, dang. Somebody is getting ejected. Number 58 for Gatlinburg Pittman. Uh, looks like Joseph Resnick is on his way to an early shower. And you've got to show some discipline. You just cannot keep running your mouth at the officials, regardless of what your opinion is. And Coach Wagner is upset. Yeah, I think he's looking for some explanation here. Well, and you all can see his face as well as we can right now. He's not happy as that head shakes as he walks off. Well... It, it's got to be pretty bad for an official to just go ahead and straight toss a kid. Oh, yeah. Normally, you get at least a warning or you get a first personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct penalty like that, and then on the second one, you're gone. Uh, it had to be pretty egregious to get him out to begin with. I also wonder if they're going to get Whaley for a horse collar because it looked like that from yeah. up here. If that happens, that's a back-to-back -back penalty. That would, would that mark would put them, the Falcons yes, first and goal. First and goal. Probably around the seven or eight yard line. So we'll see how this is um, marched off. But, you know, all things considering, you feel like these Falcons have kind of weathered the GP storm as they start off very fast, and now they're looking to tie this game up. And if they can tie this up, we got a different ball game. And now you've got to replace Renzik in the middle of that yes. GP defensive front and on the offensive, offensive line. Offensive line, too. You're absolutely correct. I've still not seen the call. I just know no, that they, I'm, they just threw Riznik off. The head the, the head official just pointed him to the sideline. Yeah. Looks like we're explaining to the Fulton coach here now. We're finally marching it off. So I'm not exactly sure what the call is. I would have thought with all the flags that we seen that we saw thrown right there that it would have been and here we go. Yes, that's exactly and we said down to the eight-yard line, and that's about right where they take it at, it, Brandon. It looks like it must have been a either a fist. It looks like it was either a face mask or a horse collar on Whaley, and then a, a an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Riznik yes. got him tossed. And it looks like the official head official right now is warning both teams. Yep. And they're still going down to the five-yard line, so it's going to be wow. a close campground first down. First and goal for the Falcons. But now the last time they were down here, they couldn't hold yep. on to the football. And we've talked about it several times. Fulton's had some adventures with the snap. That high snap has made a mistake. That that snap has, high snap's been an issue. It's thrown the timing off of some plays. They've got to get that clean down here. You can't run the risk. GP's too athletic. Let me just remind you, Brandon, they don't play with a tight end, which is un, which is um, unusual. They have more of a slot possession receiver that would be that tight end. But I don't anticipate them throwing the ball here. I'm anticipating them staying on the ground, even though they've got two stack receivers on both sides. Inside handoff, and he's going to come up. Oh, let's see that left foot mark. He's going to be a little I'm, short. But yeah, I think he's going to be marked about the one, one and a half. 
But if you're Fulton, you got three tries to get you got three tries to get five feet. Well, now the official picks it up and backs it up about another yard than what I thought it would have been. It's actually going to be at the two and a half as they stay in that same stack receiver set and look for the handoff here. Again, no keeper by Motor. Motor's taken down and maybe uses, loses a yard there as uh, Whaley's able to ride his back down and he's um, helped as well there by Ben Reese. So that's going to bring up a key third down and don't be surprised to see third down and goal from the three ron don't be surprised to see fulton throw a screen down here i wouldn't be surprised Whit and you know too this is two down territory as well whitman whaley is jumping that zone read he's attacking that zone read i think you may see fulton try to pull him in and throw mm -hmm. it over his head snap and in he's going to get into the end zone that's going to tie this ball game up the severe county utility district Touchdown, Sevier County Utility District, providing all the electricity to all of our football stadiums in Sevier County tonight. How about Johnson? That young man yep. is playing his tail off. That is the guy that, that Fulton wants to hitch their wagon to. And, Brandon, I want you to take a look at this Gatlinburg-Pittman team right now. They, their shoulders seem to be a little bit down. Um, body language is not great. Body language right now is not great. Now, once again, this – Falcons team does not have a kicker per se. They've not been able to develop one. So everything they're going to go for is going to be a two-point conversion right here from here on out. So four receiver set and should have gotten it. Yeah, boy, right it there. did. It looked like Gatlinburg's uh, Froelich there was sort of riding him a little bit, but no call there as they allowed him to play through it. But we're going to go ahead and take a break now. We'll tell you your new score is Gatlinburg Pittman seven. And the uh, Fulton Falcons six with a minute 21 left here in before the half. Do stay tuned and stay with us. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Marketing Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. Where'd you get that grin right above your chin? Top your day. Top your day. Bacon & Company is a family-owned and operated company that's been in Knoxville, Tennessee since 1925. Because we're a full-service operation, um, we have product design and development, printing, embroidery, sewing. We have fulfillment, warehousing, and then shipping you know, to our end user or customer. When someone comes into Bacon & Company, you want to fulfill their needs, what they want, and we'll do everything we can in our power to make sure they, that they leave happy. So there's the issue once again where the um, lack of a kicker, kicker for these Falcons comes back to hurt them because that's going to give Highlanders pretty good position here with a minute 21 left. And I think they have, they do, they have one timeout left as well. And that Tennessee spine kickoff was a, was a short one for, for the Falcons. It's going to be good field position for the Highlanders. You know, and, and GP right here, this is, if, if you ever had a team that could score in a hurry, this is a team that yes, can do it. Yes, is, this is. Brady Hammond's handoff to Tavera. Vera looks a bit of a hole, but it's closed pretty quickly as Tavera Allen comes up from behind and pulls him down. Ron, he didn't have a hole and got six yards. He still got six yards. <laughs> hey, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to us tonight. Mike Martin and Grace Fred Patterson are both watching tonight. We want to thank them. And Chelsea Finch is online with us as well as Mary Jo Ball. And we'll continue to call out names uh, throughout. We appreciate all of you guys joining us this evening if i am gatlinburg pittman here ron i'm going play action to a bear to try to pull these safeties up it looks like you've got man coverage on the outside and i'm looking for or deep yep so whaley goes into motion handoff once again to avera avera good room and he's on still going as he goes all the way down to the 25 yard line of the falcons boy he's just special isn't he then again what do i know ron may as well yep. just run run with avera that was, there was nothing cute, nothing pretty. That was just student body right. That Pittman offensive line got out there and just blew a hole two axe handles we, wide, and Avera took We off. need to remember that Avera is averaging nearly 200 yards per game, so he is always a viable weapon. 
Once again, handoff to Vera. As Vera continues to turn the ruse and just is not going to be denied as he wiggles all the way down to the Falcon three-yard line. I'm, and I'm waiting for a call, and they do, in fact, Gatlinburg, Pippen, the Highlands, call the timeout with 17 seconds left. I couldn't, I, can, I couldn't see the number of Gatlinburg Pittman's <laughs> right tackle on that play, but he got out and got a hold of, not a hold, but he got his hands on a Fulton defensive end and blocked him all the way to the sidelines. Yep. He got his hands on him at the hash mark and walled him all the way off to the sideline. Avera came off his inside shoulder and rolled down that sideline. Good gracious. I mean, we, we were talking about Gatlinburg Pittman throwing the ball down here. They've handed it to Tegan Avera yep. three times. They're yep. knocking on the door. And uh, uh, Wilson right there, the corner, able to step up and save the touchdown. Otherwise, I, you know, I think he pretty much just promenades into the end zone. I, I think T Tegan Avera, especially going into next season. Yes. This young man is going to be a, a running back going to cause some people to make some business decisions because he runs hard. Let me just share with everybody that Tegan Avera has already been our player of the week already once this year. And he may be in line if he continues his performance to get nominated twice. Yep, he's, he's going to be, uh, be in the conversation if he continues this. I do think you'll see GP throw here just because of the lack of time yes. and the time. So Hammond's back waiting for the snack, and motion goes Whaley to his left, looking, 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 and just throws it away very smartly as there was nobody open. That is the mark of a veteran quarterback. Yep. Is everybody thinks, oh, well, he didn't complete the pass. He didn't make a big play. But he also didn't cost you an opportunity to score points. He squared his shoulders. It was a one-man route. It was designed on the motion and rub for Whaley. Whaley was covered. Fulton scouted it well. It wasn't there. And Hammonds just throws it in, throws it over the back of the end zone up toward the gate there so to we, fight another play. We also want to thank Jerry Ogle for tuning in with us tonight as Hammonds back in the shotgun with Avera off to his left. Hand off, and Avera is going to be stopped right there. I don't know if they can snap the ball again. No, they have no timeouts here. I don't think they're going to be able to get it back in. Two down seconds, one second down, and they're he not going to be able to get it off. make it. And that's going to make this a one-point game going into the, into the half. No halftime interviews. Wow. So, Just, wow. How, if you're the Highlanders, Yep, you just have to be aware. How do you, how do you call? I, I'm stunned you call a run play right there. I yep. feel like it's got to be a pass. It's either throw it to the end zone, throw it out the back of the end zone, or at least be able to kick a field goal. You got to feel like that's at least three points on the field, and that's a long, productive drive that comes up empty for empty. the Highlanders. Yep. And what that's going to do is give the Falcons a ton of confidence heading into the locker room. Well, we want to encourage everyone to stay with us through the half. I believe no halftime. Okay. No interview during the half, as I just told my production team. Regardless, we want you to stay with us through um, the half. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll share some stats with you, and we'll also talk about the adjustments that both teams need. Once again, your score here at the half in the Mountain Thicket, Gatlinburg Pittman 7 and the Fulton Falcons 6. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Market and Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. Where'd you get that grin right above your chin? Top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. Bacon and Company is a family owned and operated company that's been in Knoxville, Tennessee since 1925. Because we're a full service operation, um, we have product design and development, printing, embroidery, sewing, we have fulfillment, warehousing, and then shipping you know, to our end user or customer. When someone comes into Bacon and Company, you want to fulfill their needs, what they want, and we'll do everything we can in our power to make sure they, that they leave happy.
At Sevier County Electric System, we know that when the power goes out, it's important to you to have power restored as quickly as possible. That's why we've introduced the Power Action Line. As soon as you call the Power Action Line from a phone associated with your electric service, we know immediately that your power is out. The Power Action Line lets us answer up to 1,200 calls per hour, so we can make sure and identify all outages, even after major storms. We track those outages through our integrated mapping system, which provides our operations center a better understanding of where the affected areas are located and predicts probable starting points that helps our crews begin looking for the problem. Our whole goal is to get your power back on as soon as possible. We'll even call you back to make sure your service has been restored. At Sevier County Electric System, we want to take care of our customers, and that's what we do every day. Sevier County Electric System, we are the power behind our community. Just call 865-774-6300. Where'd you get that grin? Right above your chin. Top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. With a smile at Andy's top your day. Clay Bowles Campground and Cabins and Clay Bowles Market and Grill have been family owned and operated since 1978. Clay Bowles Campground is spacious with 320 sites including vacation homes and cabins. Great location for family reunions and large groups with entertainment on the weekends. Make reservations at Clay Bowles Campgrounds and Cabins located on 405 Wears Valley Road, Pigeon Forge. Back for the fountains is Johnson. And boy, that just takes care of the equation, doesn't it? That, whatever, you're talking about the difference in field position yes. we've seen all night. That East Tennessee Spine kick, Company kickoff right there goes into the end zone. Again, Fulton's going to start deep in their own deep. territory. Gatlinburg Pitton has consistently had good field position. They're making Fulton drive a long way. If you're the Falcons, can you put a long drive together? Because every yep. time you threaten, it's going to short field. Yep. And I would be willing to bet you that these halftime locker room conversations were two different conversations. Motorback, boy, snap, high snap once again, real quick out. And boy, that is, that is sniffed out well there by the Gatlinburg Pittman Island. And this uh, Graydon Ware comes up and, and puts an end to that run real quick. Also um, involved right there. It's, wait a minute. Fulton has absolutely got to get this snap sort of out right. It's blowing their plays up yes. before anything happens. Johnson is, and Johnson is just up ended by Ben Reese. And boy, you know, it little, only two plays, but this um, Highland team has come out with a little bit of fire in their belly. They've come out with a little bit of fire, but now the the Fulton offensive line is doing them some favors because, again, Molden looks like a, like he's trying to catch a knuckleball pitcher. That that staff is coming everywhere but to his hands. He's had to jump up twice and try to hand the ball off quick with his feet off the ground. That is asking for a, for a turnover run. So Zion Nalen, as we talked about him earlier, he's playing both ways tonight. And that is just an overthrow by about five yards as he was looking for the receiver there, Joe Moore, but um, nowhere close to, to Joe Moore on that. So. Well, even if he was, it was excellent coverage by the Highlanders down that sideline. But I love Fulton taking the shot. Yep. They've got to loosen this Gatlinburg Pittman defense up. They've got to make them respect the passing game so they can't just sell out to stop Johnson and come after Molden. That was a one-man route all the way. Everything else was window dressing. Caden Froelich there with the um, coverage as Carlos Orr is back deep. And that is almost blocked. And I'm not so sure that didn't, that he didn't get a piece of that. And uh, once again, we'll call out the young man's name because we've called it out several times with Whaley there. Um, I'm not sure if he got a piece of that or not, but he certainly disrupted a kicker enough that he couldn't get it up very well. Can we just start referring to him as Whitman Whaley, agent of chaos? Because <laughs> this, this young man, doesn't matter if he's on offense, defense, special teams, he is blowing plays up, he's yeah. making things happen. Uh, he's, he's laying people out. This is a GP team. Again, we're going to say this again. A big field position advantage even yep. after a pump that rolled a long way. So just as a reminder, Joe Riznick has been tossed out of the game. And we have a new right tackle in for the Highlanders. Is where he goes in motion. Handoff field there. As he goes wide and looking for safety, he's eventually going to go north to south. 
great job there by the Falcons to just simply stretch that game out as Wamba comes out and runs stride for stride and then to the sideline. That entire Fulton defense got out there. They moved out there. We're running just as hard as they could out there. I've got to give credit to big number 74 for Sean Cash. Big number 74 down there looks like he got room for another number on his jersey. And he was out there at the sideline making that play on a bear. That's a hustle play for a big man. You like to see the big man move, hand back, rolling out to his left, looking. He does have a man open, and he is wide open as he continues to move down the field. And I think he's going to score. He is going to score. Rick Whaley there on the good 65-yard touchdown reception. The Spirit County Utility District touchdown. And that's going to make the new score there, 13 to 6 with 10 minutes left here in the period. Hey, we want to thank, too, we sort of failed to do this, but we want to thank Sevier County Utility District for sponsoring our halftime show. We want to thank you for sponsoring the halftime show, for sponsoring our touchdowns as well. Enormous credit there to Brady Hammonds. Fulton sent the house. He took a lick again. Yep. I mean, he absolutely got, it was again, it was a clean hit, but he got smoked again hung in there and delivered that ball on the money, and this time Whitman Whaley comes up with it. And looks like we're gonna have uh, Fulton jumping offside. Yeah, I believe, I believe that was Burnett there. He jumped a little bit early offside, so that's gonna make it even closer for Carson Guessing, although I don't think he needs it. He's perfect in extra points this season. And it's up, and it is in fact good, and that's gonna make a new score. The Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders 14, and the Fulton Falcons six. And we'll go ahead and take a break now. Do stay with us as we continue here from Hammond Stadium. Yep, we are back as uh, after the score, Gessling is back for the kickoff. And once again, Giesling just drills it through the back of the end zone and that's gonna start the Falcons deep again at their own 25 yard line. Well, we have got some Andy's frozen custard trivia question for you tonight and um, if you're listening home, we've got free ice cream for you. We'll even mail it out to you if you can come up with the answer to our Andy's frozen custard trivia question. Peyton Man, of course, and Casey Clawson are our number one and number two all-time passing leaders. Can someone tell me who is number three on that list? And we'll wait that answer online. So, high snap once again. Johnson looking for space and they closed down pretty good. We'll give him two yards on that as uh, Burkett comes up and also for those Gatlinburg uh, Pittman Highlanders, Luke Stewart's involved in that play as well. And around that East Tennessee spine kickoff, again, through the end zone, that's such a weapon at every level of football if you don't have to risk the return. So that's going to bring up second down and about seven. Oh, nearly picked off. Ne nearly picked and also nearly an outstanding throw and catch. He had his yep. man on that dig route coming open. Great play by Burkett to undercut it and get his hands on it, but he had his man there. So that's going to um, bring up third down and about six. You, you take a look at, at this Fulton offense, and I, I keep coming back to this, that leaping, that always having to leap to catch the snap is causing yes. an extra beat. It's throwing the timing off of the whole offense. Fulton's got to get that fixed. So Molden looking as Molden's able to escape the pocket. He's going to pick up enough for the first time before he's upended. I'm waiting to see if the ball, no, I think they're going to say he was down. And I, to tell you that he's going to feel that in the morning is going to be an understatement. I'll tell you right now, uh, Ron, he's, he's feeling that now. But Molden came out on the back door there. There was great pressure from Gatlinburg Pittman, but Molden's a great athlete. You can't just rush him like you do a normal quarterback. You've got to play contain. He got outside, slipped the tackle, picked up a Claybos campground first down, and now the Fulton Falcons have got a new set of downs, yep. and they're in business. Molden back. Johnson looking for room, uh, is able to wiggle, probably a gain of about five as we, uh, yeah, that will be a gain of five as the clock continues to work down to under 10 minutes now, exactly nine minutes and 12 seconds. Ron, I'm a fan of Johnson. I, I love the way he runs. He puts his nose in there. He runs behind his pads. He's got that explosion. He's just a, he's my kind of running back. I enjoy watching him work. 
So we want to thank Reggie Taylor for tuning in with us tonight. And if you didn't hear the trivia question in just a minute, we'll bring that back up. Johnson is looking for space and has got good space. Now I'm going to tell you, we've talked and talked about the right side of the Gatlinburg-Pittman offensive line and how they have been blowing huge alleys open. Yes. On that play, Fulton came to the right side, they pulled a guard, they kicked out, they had a great seal. Johnson came off the inside shoulder of his man, exploded forward, great yardage. Uh, and a, uh, enough for a uh, Clay Bowles so camp first, first down. down. Yeah, Christopher Burnett there, the uh, right guard out there sealing that hole. So Johnson's able to pick up another first down as they eke into Highlanders. Uh, boy, Johnson's just, uh, <laughs> Johnson's quick, man. I, I'm going to tell you, Johnson for, for Fulton right now is, is approaching a category that I, I rarely hand up. But that young man, he's about one more big run like that for me just naming him a hoss. That is an <laughs> outstanding running back. Mold back. Hand off once again to Johnson. They're going to continue to run that train, but this time sniffed out much better by the Highlander. Ben Reese there on the tackle, able to shoot that gap and close it down. And this is the point if you're Fulton, you've got to start working that play action. GP is selling out to blow that run up now. Now's the time to fake that handoff and try to go up top. So once again, our Andy's frozen custard trivia question. Looking for some free ice cream. Shoot us a shoot us the answer on that through Facebook and we'll hook you up. Molded back looking, surveying the field all kinds of time, but it's closing quick and he just holds on to the football too long, Brandon. Got to eat. And there's a late flag. Did and let's they, see what this is. I believe this. If that's a face mask, yes. they just bailed. That's going to be holding on the Falcons. Falcons, that it's going to back them up even more. Yep. Evan Allen there on the tackle as he's able to. I was going to say, if that's a face mask, what a. Yeah, what a, what a that turnaround would that would have been. And so, Molden at that point, you've got to know the ball's either got to come out or you've got yes. to use your legs and run it. Yep. You've got to have that clock in your head. So that's going to. That's going to bring up third down and about 11 yards for the first for the Falcons. I, you have to feel like this is two down territory it, it's for the gotta Falcons. Be. And Ron, we still got our trivia question up. Peyton Manning, Casey Clawson, number one and number two in Tennessee history in terms of passing yards. Who's number three? Uh, you, you asked me this earlier. You nailed it. You did. Came out of your mouth pretty quick. Moving back, looking. Oh, He's got I a man on the flat. And see, kind of. Uh, Wobble is, boy, you got to be real careful there. Boy, Gatlinburg so. Pittman, the Highlanders right there are playing with fire. That is the second late hit they could have called on yes. Gatlinburg Pittman that they've not. Now, if you look out in the lights, you're going to notice that it has started raining just a little bit here. So uh, ball security may c become an issue because, as you, you well know, within the first five minutes or so, once it starts raining, things can get pretty slick. We got to change it running back for the Falcons. It's still over six. I can't tell if GP came off. GP offsides. Forget having to move for the first down. It looks like that's going to give a Claybos campground first down to the Falcons for free. Yep. So, um, and and you can hear. You can hear Coach Wagner up here in your head yep. going, you can't make that mistake. So, you know, uh, you felt like after that GP score that uh, the Falcons were going to have to respond, and they, they have. Let's see, though, if they can finish this drive. Mona to Johnson. Womble, I'm sorry, and he is brought down by Burkett, and we've got another flag, and let's see what this call is. The way that Fulton's moving, it looks like it it's must be on the down, yeah. I'm, I'm anticipating a holding call once again. Let's see if we can get another, holding, another call. holding call. These are the kind of mistakes that have hurt yep. Fulton over and over again. And you're inside the 30-yard line when you make that mistake inside the GP 30-yard line. You can't keep doing that. No. You know, this is a Falcons team, and we can see it, that is really, really wanting to run the ball and you know take some time off this clock and limit gp's opportunities but in order to run the football you cannot get behind the sticks because now instead of first down and ten you're looking down at 
I would love to see first and go back 20. To that dump out pass that they ran earlier, throwing it over the blitzing linebacker for GP. I think there's something to be made there. So this is a Claybos camp down first down is able to boy and just a slew. I think the entire defensive line there finally gets a hold of of uh, Johnson there is able to toss him down for a, for a loss there of about four yards. Johnson tried three different holes. There were Highlanders in all of them. That was all the time he had to try. A lot of credit to Gatlinburg Pittman. They swarmed the football there. So that's going to bring up second down and 21 is officially it's a one yard loss on the play. Um, and the clock continues to move as we are under six minutes now in the third period. And we're going to go ahead and take a timeout. While they do, we will as well and acknowledge our sponsors. Touchdown! Just like that as Moten lines up and throws the deep ball in one-on-one -on -one action there as the Falcons respond in big faction there with Sevier County Utility District. Touchdown to Joe Moore there in the corner of the end zone. Ron, showed him run, showed him yep. run, showed him run. GP comes up. You're able to get the safeties and the defensive backs to bite up on the run, trying to come be good defenders, trying to come up and support it, and you had that deep shot open. Now, big two-point conversion for the Falcons. Yes. You a chance to tie this up here. There we go, is uh, Moe's back in the uh, shotgun, and we, uh, wow. Man. It's going to make this two-point conversion, of course, all that much more difficult. Still, if you're falling right now, you have got to be ecstatic about being able to hit that deep pass play. You've got something going on in the air now. Again, first half, both teams traded rushing touchdowns. We're in the late third yep. quarter now, both teams have traded long passing touchdowns. So Dexter Moulton trying to figure out here what the call is. Finally has it. Comes to the line of scrimmage as instead of at the two and a half, they'll be taking this two point conversion attempt from the seven and a half. They got to get lined in a four receiver attempt. Yeah, and they're running out of time. You're right. They do get out with about two seconds left on the clock. Moulton looking, 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 and incomplete. And that's going to keep that. And I believe there the attempt was to number four, Dexter Lewis, and he got up looking for a, a P.I. call, but none to be had. He, he's got a case for being being held as he was trying to clear and come open, but yep. on the back side, the left, the left side of the line, Whitman Whaley's also got a case for getting held by the left tackle for Fulton, so that one comes out in the wash. So that's going to make your new score now with, as we approach the five-minute mark. Gatlinburg Pittman, 14, and Fulton, 10. 12. 12. Yeah, it's impossible to score 10. Well, it's not impossible, but not on two touchdowns. 12. So a two-point game here. And Brandon, on a scale of 1 to 10, how surprised are you? Now, keep in mind that, you know, this is a 3A Gatlinburg Pittman playing up with a 5A Fulton team. But all that being said... I, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm going to go only about a three. This is a really good Fulton team. They're, they are much better than their record. They have a lot of athletes, and they're yes. a lot larger school. they got more bodies than GP does. Uh, I'm not stunned. I, we, we talked coming into this thing. I thought this was going to be a pretty close game. And, Ramon, I've got a second. I'm going to uh, go off script and shout out real quick. I just found out my little niece is watching this thing. So, hello to Hattie. Well, I'm not exactly sure the point of that little pooch kick right there is it's going to give um, Gatlinburg Pittman really good field position at their own 40-yard line. Well, Fulton has uh, Fulton's had some interesting Tennessee spine kickoffs tonight. Yes, they, they have. I think it also comes back to that issue of not having a kicker right now. Yeah. You just don't want to risk kicking out of bounds. And you always have the option on one of those short kicks. If you can get it to a lineman, they may bobble it and get mm -hmm. it back to you. So Especially in the rain. That's going to um, that's going to give the Highlanders a Claybos campground first down as Hammonds receives a sack and a three receiver set. Back out to Whaley. Whaley's looking for space and he's got some. Continues to cut. Good. Oh, he makes a great move and is takes the ball all the way down to the 30-yard line of the Falcons. What a move 
there as I, I believe he just juked. Was that Raymond Thomas, the junior, out of his shoes? He juked him out of his dignity. There was just – he was just left grabbing at air and a linebacker – a guy that's going to play linebacker at the next level, a guy that's going <laughs> to yes. be, be a linebacker at Wake Forest – is not supposed to be able to move like that. Nope. What a play by Whitman Whaley. That Claybo's campground first down was a big one. So Hammond's back, hands off to Avera. Avera with a nice hold there. And we've got to give, make sure there's no flag on the on that play. We've got to give a pat on the back there to Graydon Ware as he's able to push out the defensive end and set that hold the for right, Tegan Avera. The right side of this Highlanders line is winning consistently. Yep. They aren't just getting blocks. They're not just getting drive. They're getting drives and seals every time Gatlinburg Pittman goes to that side. So that's going to uh, give uh, the Gatlinburg Pittman uh, uh, second down and three from the Fulton 25. Hammond's back. He finds a man open there as Carlos Orr is able to bob and weave all the way down to the 15-yard line of the Falcons. Orr's reception, they're going to give them a Claybos campground first down and this is the kind of offense we expected to see Gatlinburg Pittman come out with. This is what we were expecting to see. We said at the start of the game, the stars have got to shine bright for Gatlinburg Pittman to win this game. Those guys are starting to rise to the occasion on this drive. We've seen all of them have big plays. So back is Hammonds in the shotgun with Avera off to his right. And he's back, gets pressured, is able to step up and just um, ducks the linebacker as he's about to level him. I think I think Brady may have known to drop there because that pressure was coming from the backside. He may have known to slide when his life flashed before his eyes because there was a there was a Fulton Falcon coming up the middle with bad intentions. He saw an opportunity to get the quarterback. Now, a ton of credit to Brady Hammonds though. They were going to raise up and throw that quick screen like they threw yep. to, to Whaley earlier, and Fulton had it jumped. If you throw that, it's, it may be six the other way. So three receivers on the right as Hammonds awaits the snap, and he's able to get a low snap to Avera's hands, and he's able to cut through and the hurdles. A defensive player continues to keep his balance and works all the way down to the Falcon three-yard line. That is the epitome of athleticism right there. Ron, right, I don't know I've ever seen that before. I've seen on I've the sideline, yeah, not in the middle of the field. I've seen running backs jump over defenders but not come down and then continue to drag them. <laughs> yeah. Tegan Avera is something else, man. You gotta, you gotta have a brave soul to do that in the middle of the line of scrimmage like he just did. And it worked. He, he didn't just do it. He did it, and it worked. So that's going to bring up first down and go. Claybo's campground first down, and we'll see if the Highlanders can finish off this drive. Avera keeps moving, keeps moving, and then is backed up by a slew of Falcons. Now Fulton down here, you get penetration this time. You hit, you hit Avera. We've seen everybody that's played Tegan Avera, everybody that's played Gatlinburg Pittman this year struggle to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Fulton's able to swarm and drive him back. That's going to be the key if you want to keep them out of the end zone down here. We'll give cash credit there for the uh, tackle and keeping him out of the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up now second down and third. Officially no gain on that play. Got to watch a fade to Carlos Orr yeah. down here. He's a huge weapon. So... Looks like Fulton's overloaded to the left side of the offense. Hammonds works the clock down, hands off, and just keeps. And I believe that's going to be, it is in fact, a Gatlinburg Pittman touchdown. This touchdown brought to you by Sevier County Utility District, turning on all the lights in Sevier County. And boy, he just stuck his head down and just wasn't going to be denied. Ran that, run that uh, read option. Saw everybody going with Tegan Avera because yep. why would you not if you're Fulton and just took off, stuck his head down and said, I don't, I'm not going to get much, but I don't need much. So Gieselin back as he continues to look and remain perfect this season with extra points. And boy, Falcons in. I think they did jump. Again. Yep. Jumped again. Let's see if this is, uh, this penalty is denied. If we're going to move forward, we'll just... I was going to say, just decline it, yeah, and we'll move forward. Let's see here. It's going to depend on if they blew it dead or not. Well, it looks so we'll like just try it again, I guess. So, I, yeah, maybe they called it dead, Brandon, but it doesn't matter. Regardless, Gessling remains perfect on the season for his extra points and makes the new score, Gallenberg-Pittman 21, 
and the Falcons 12. It's going to be real important now as um, we wait for these Falcons to re respond. But as they take a break, let's go ahead and take a break ourselves, acknowledge some of our sponsors, and we encourage you to come back with us as GP has extended their lead to nine over the Fulton Falcons. Start the kickoff. Oh, it's his face. And he's able to take the ball all the way out for the Fulton Falcons is Joe Moore. Boy, we've caught his name quite a bit as he's been active um, this evening. But that's going to spot these Falcons in good position as they are brought all the way out to their own 43-yard line. That's going to give us a Clay Bogues campground first down. And that East Tennessee spine kickoff, Fulton's able to actually get good field position, best they've had. I think maybe the best starting field position, not off a turnover they've had all night. But, Ron, you said something coming into this game. You brought it up, and we just talked about it off air. The difference in this game right now is the, is the fact that GP is perfect on extra points, and Fulton has not been able to yes. convert either, and that's turned this into a two-score game. game. Molding off, handoff to Johnson. Johnson continues to work downfield and just stood up by about three-fourths of the defense of the Highlanders. Yeah, but when you've got a big guys like big number 64 there for Fulton coming in to push that pile, you can uh, you can move it a few more yards with him. So we still not had a response yet to our Andy's Frozen Custard trivia question of the night. So I'm going to go ahead and give us a bit of a hint. And the hint that I have for you is he was down there between the years of 2004 and 2006, and his uncle was a famous Boston Celtic basketball player. For our Andy's Frozen Custard trivia question, Johnson's able to work down and almost tiptoes on the sideline. Ron, that play was dead in the water. That should have been a three-yard loss. Johnson comes out the back door. Tons of credit to his re to his receivers on this near sideline because they were blocking their butts off. And he took off up there and was able to make something out of it. Ran through a tackle. He almost turned that, he almost tipped over that, turned up and was able to score. We want to thank James Luciano and Deborah Berrier for tuning in with us tonight as we are at the one minute and 20 second mark of the third period. It's motored back. Looking. It does have a space out there, and that is Latavius Wilson, who's uh, ridden out of bounds there by Ben Reese. But before he goes out, or I should say Whit Whaley, before he goes out, he picks up good yardage there on that second down. That's going to bring up second down and short. If Fulton can throw with Molden like that yes. on, the, on the controlled throws, the intermediates, that makes their running game so much more dangerous. And again, GP got burned for a long touchdown pass earlier. Now you got to respect that. It opens up the offense for these Falcons. So high snap as it's been all night long. Johnson is wrapped up and is brought down for a big loss. And don't sling him if you're Gatlinburg Pittman. You've been called for that once already tonight. I'm going to give a lot of credit to Johnson. They never actually got him on the ground. No. Again, he runs so hard. Oh, no. Oh, and he's coming up limp. If, if Johnson is going to be limping and coming off the field for Fulton, that changes the entire complexion of their offense. Yeah, he's he a game gets, changer, no, no doubt. He, he is the bell cow for this Fulton offense. I think a lot of pressure shifts to Molden now, both with his arms and his legs, because he's an explosive athlete too, but he's got to make those plays. And I'm looking over here as the trainers come over to talk to Johnson, but he seems as though he's, he's okay. Womble's able to get about four yards before he's uh, dropped there by number 70, Ron, Jackson Case. Womble's a good looking back. He is a good looking he back. He runs hard too. Keep looking over here to see, and they're stretching out Johnson right now here on the sideline. So we'll keep an eye on that. We have just three, and I don't know that we're going to get this one off before the end of the third period. So as they take a break, we're going to take a break as well as um, we want to remind you as well as our Andy's Frozen Custard trivia question. Peyton Manning and Casey Clawson are number one and number two in UT passing history. Who is number three? Once again, so stay with us. Exciting game here tonight at Hammond Stadium. You score before we go to the break. Gatlinburg Pittman 21 and Fulton Falcons 12. 
that he almost came up with that. I don't know if that was inbounds or not, Ron. I couldn't tell from this. No, he was out, but what an effort there by number seven, I believe, for the Fulton Falcons, Joe Moore, but just not able to come up, and Joe Moore comes up limping right now as, as well. And this is this is what Fulton couldn't afford, is a no. couple of your best playmakers to come up lame here. So now the question becomes, is the Gatlinburg-Pittman team able to put their foot to the neck of these Fulton Falcons? I think this is the first time in this game that GP has had the opportunity to maybe put this thing away. You feel like a touchdown here yes. might do it. Yep. So three receivers off to his left, the bear off to his right. A little quick out there to Whaley, and Whaley's able to pick up about four. A good open field tackle there by Walter Williams in the open field. Well, Brady Hammond's living dangerously right there because there was a Fulton Falcon trying to come under his block, and that was almost a touchdown pass to the guys in white. That, that's such a high-risk, high-reward throw on that quick screen to the top, especially if the defenders are able to defeat their blocks one-on-one -on -one and get back there. Here we go. Looks like Gatlinburg Pippen's going to come out. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Avera back there with Brady Hammonds. Hammonds wait. Here's the snap. Hammonds bobbles it. Turns out throws to Avera. Oh, oh boy. It was a wheel route to Avera all the way, and he just, I mean, inches overthrew him around. That would have been. Oh, if Avera been a catches touchdown. that, he's still running. Yep. No doubt. That is going to bring up third down, though, um, for the Highlanders. We want to thank. Uh, once again, everyone, for viewing in tonight. We still have our Andy's Frozen Custard trivia question out there. Um, so, I we love, just, we I just talked a minute call. ago. Yes, great play call, you know, on that wheel route. We hadn't seen that out of, out of Gatlinburg. I mean, and they've got the tools to do that, by the way. I'm surprised we don't see it more. But we just talked about them putting the, the foot on the throat of Fulton. But here we are at third down and long. And, and let's see if we can... Oh, great coverage. Oh, a late flag. A late, late, late flag. I hope this is not a P.I. call because he looked like that was clean. It looked clean to me, too. Latavius Wilson there. Great play. We're going to wait and see what the call is, but... Looks like it's going to be a sideline side warning, warning on okay. Fulton, so at least it's not a P.I. That no. was an outstanding defensive play by the Falcons. And again, we were talking, GP, two, two plays in a row, second down and third down. They looked for those knockout shots. Just missed one. The second one they come up, they fake that little route to the slot, that, that screen to the slot man they've been throwing and wearing people out with with Whaley. Hammonds gives them a little hitch, has a go route to Kai called over the top, and just misses him. Great coverage by, by the Falcons and bring up fourth down. Gets him back for the punt. Oh boy, that was so intelligent right there. It, as Derek Smith backed off. It, it went from, it went from, it became very intelligent after very nearly being a really dumb mistake. He was trying to field that ball off the hop to see if he could do something, but on, on such a wet and soggy night down there already, that's asking for trouble. That's playing with fire. But a big Claybos camp around first down for the Falcons. And, Ron, we keep talking about it. We thought GP had the opportunity to mm -hmm. knock them out. They took two knockout shots, missed them both. Fulton still hanging still around. Still in the same. Well, we want to acknowledge Bailey Marvel, who wrote in and answered our trivia question for the night. Our third leaving receiver in UT history was, in fact, Eric Ainge. So, Bailey Marvel, we'll be sending you your free Andy's Frozen Custard for our Andy's Frozen Custard trivia question. So, boy, they just about bumped each other. Regardless, Johnson's able to turn that into a big play, and he's still working down the field as Whaley's able to push him out of bounds, but not before he works all the way into Highlander territory down to the 43-yard line. That looked awkward, and I think off the bump, everyone just got sucked in. I want to give Johnson so much credit. He ran into the GP blitz. GP timed their blitz really well. They came late. They disguised it. 
They came into the right side. That was where Johnson wanted to go. He pressed the line. GP sucked in. He was able to bounce out and get outside for a huge gain and a Playboy's campground first down. Come on back. Hands off to Johnson. He's continues to look. Ben Reese meets him at the line of scrimmage, and he throws Ben Reese off, but he's – oh, he laterals. And he's going to get popped for this effort. Oh, no. And he's – he we got – We've got a foul and down. I can't Johnson's tell down, is. I believe. And oh, Johnson no. looks like he's really uncomfortable. You with especially you, you hate to see anybody get hurt, but with a game that he's had, you really hope he's okay. That looked yeah. awkward. I love the heads up play of trying to pitch it to your dad. Yeah, and it just about worked too, because he had space. If 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 Molden gets one more block, he may he may rattle off a big one. Uh, right now, our thoughts and prayers and concerns are with are with Johnson as he's down on the field. Uh, we we really hope he's okay. Well, if you remember just a little bit ago, Brandon, he jogged off the field, um, really kind of limping on that ankle, and and it seems to be still bothering. We'll see how he responds as he gets up. I'm going to tell oh, you. Oh, he popped up better than I thought he was going to pop up, Brandon. That young man right there, Ron, is tougher than a two dollar steak. Yep. He is not going anywhere. Greeted by his teammate there, Dexter Molden, as he goes to the sideline. We'll keep an eye and see if he receives any tra treatment there uh, by the staff. If you're Fulton right now, you have abs – Johnson has got to be the heart and soul of this team yes. right now. He has left it absolutely all on the field tonight. He has played his tail off. Yes, he has. So what that's going to do, though, is that's going to give um, – Womble an opportunity to get involved as he's in the backfield now for the Falcons. Snap back. He goes up for it. Boy, Molden takes a pop. He's able to reverse his field and find some space. And he's whoa! Going. Oh, all the way down to the, Let's see where the spot is. He's close to a Claybos campground first down. Let, let me go ahead and give an enormous shout out to Womble right there. He stepped up into the blitzing Gatlin yes, Pittman linebacker. took a big pop. Took a big pop, but he sprung his quarterback, protected him, and let him leak out the backside for that big run. Outstanding play. Going to be third and just short because of the slide. So we also want to thank David Russell, who's watching with us online. So that's going to bring up just short of the first down, third down and one. I imagine for the Falcons. Right the yeah, this is going to be Wommel right up the middle. And he's – oh, I think he stopped. Matter of fact, I don't think he stopped. I know he stopped as Ben Reese is able to come up, fill the gap, and shove him back for a loss. <laughs> Wommel was coming up there and getting ready to put his head down, and all of a sudden he sees Ben Reese in the hole completely untouched. So that's going to bring speed. up fourth down and two. And, Brandon, this very well may be the play of the game. This is absolutely two-down two territory. Something we've not seen Fulton do a lot of right here. I think I would give Molden the opportunity to run a quarterback yes. read. Yes, is I that agree. Is Johnson back out there? He is out there again. Wow. This young man is just leaving it all on the field. The single single receiver to your left. And he, in fact. That's caught. That is caught. Let's see. And I, it is enough for the first down. That is a Clavos camp round first down. Wow. As they kick. pick up the markers and they move. For as you said, that Claybos campground first down, and that's going to keep these Falcons on the field as they look to pull this back to a one-score game here at the 8-minute and 40-second mark of the fourth period. Huge fourth down conversion right there. Molden and Johnson, man, I, these two young guys have absolutely impressed the heck out of, out of me tonight. They have looked so good. Molden looking for space, and it's just popped out of bounds there. By Ben Reese, who's able to just get technique and leverage on him and just get him up before he can turn the corner. Ben Reese playing with fire there again, though. That was that was another hit right on the sidelines. GP is – they've had three of those, and they have – they've gotten away with all of them. They've not been flagged yet, but, man, they have come close a few times right there. That's something I think that you're going to see Coach Wagner try to get tightened up this week in practice. So that's going to bring up second down and about 11 here for the uh, Falcons. Mullen's back looking. Little dump pass off there to Johnson, and Johnson's uh, just um, 
Boy, Johnson's going to be sore tomorrow. I don't know how else to say it. Johnson's going to be uh, – Johnson's sore right now, but he is playing his – you want to talk about a young man that is just playing his guts out and leaving it all yes. on the field. Whether Gatlinburg Pittman wins this game or Fulton wins this game, Johnson to me has had as much heart and as much effort as anybody yes. we've seen. He has impressed me so much tonight because he's taken shots from guys like Whaley and Reese, and th those dudes arrive with bad intentions in a hurry. Those are big yep. athletes. They they're fast. They hit you hard, and they are wearing wearing Johnson down. And, and you know one thing, if you're Coach McMillan, you just have to admire out of his team tonight is they've had no quit in them. Not a not an ounce. And they've, they've had, had a, yes, they have had multiple opportunities to fold the tents tonight and they just will not will not well, and call it a night Albert Johnson right now for, for Fulton I mean he's the guy you, you know he's playing hurt you know he's playing sore he's had to come out twice for injuries he keeps coming back in Molden uh, earlier right there plays breaking down you've got, a, got pressure in your face read it dump it off to your running back and Johnson just puts his head down and gets a really solid game and you know you've got to give a lot of kudos too to this offensive line of the Falcons who've been able to stand up so well tonight and Cash and Bailey and Burnett and Lopez and he's able to connect there did he hang on to that yes I believe no, he, he did no he did not I think the, wow. I think the lick I think that delayed lick knocked it out and got the late call because he well, had his hands it, on it. Late he call is right. I think the official was trying to figure out exactly what the call was there too. But regardless, it's going to bring up fourth down and eight, and here we are again. And we talked about it a minute ago. This may be the play of the game. Well, this may be the play of the game round two well, as we are at the seven-minute and 14-second mark of the final period. And the Fulton's credit right here, I mean, you've got to have some confidence because you're going – yeah, GP broke that play up, but you had the completion for the first down there. You know you can do this. Yep. So Molden back for one of the first times, not a high snap, and he works around. He's able to find a receiver, and he presses it in. That is another Clay as Latavius Wilson. Yeah, as Latavius Wilson's able to take possession, and that's going to be a Clay Bowes campground. First down as the clock continues to move now under seven minutes. Ron, how many lives have these Fulton Falcons oh, got? Oh, wow. Just when you're just when you're like you can hear the nails coming in on a the coffin, they want to kick it open again. So Molden back here in the shotgun, wraps around, rolls to his left, looking, looking, looking. He's got a receiver open in the end zone, and that is a Fulton Falcon touchdown. My goodness. That's a Sevier County Utility District touchdown. And once again, we call out the name of Latavius Wilson, who has led these Falcons all year long in receiving yards and showing the good hands there to come up with that one. And Latavius Wilson, another guy like John, like Albert Johnson tonight, who's been hurt, who's had to come off the field a couple times because he's dinged up, comes back out and gets this touchdown. Now, big two-point conversion again for Fulton. Right, yes. now these, right now these missed extra points are the difference in the game. If you can get one here, though, you can win with a field goal. Yes. Simone looking. And waiting for a signal, and it's he is just short of the goal line. So once again, the two-point conversion for the Falcons fails. That makes your new scores. We're trying to peek over the scoreboard, which is going to be 21-18. 21-18. Just what a fantastic effort by these Fulton Falcons. I have been so impressed with, with them. That offensive line has played well. They have taken a ton of licks. Albert Johnson has been outstanding. Fulton just has no quit in them. No. Now if you're GP again, you're in the same place. Can we finally put these guys away? And An and old coach myself, you know, let, let me just caution these Highlanders. Don't get super conservative here. No. This is not the time to be running the not with six minutes and 45 seconds. You still stick to your game plan, and you stay aggressive offensively. How big is this uh, East Tennessee Spine kickoff going to be, Ron, in the field this position is, that comes from yes. it? And we saw all my, if you're If you're Fulton with the adventures you've had in the kicking game, <laughs> Why not try an onside kick yeah. on a sloppy wet field yeah. and see what you can get? How much would that change things? This could be one of those longest yard moments where you just scribble and hope for the best. Yep. So, as we say that, let's see what happens here, Brandon. And, boy, line drive kick. And what that's going to do, though, is of all the people you don't want to kick to is Carlos Orr. 
that is, as he's able to. That boy, I'm not sure Colors Orr was down. I don't know that he was down, but I think they may have blown his forward progress dead. Yeah, I think he bounced right off of. He spun off the backside, but his knee never touched. You want to talk and about Carlos Orr is. Woo. You, you want to talk about a young man that you don't want to make, make a line drive kick no. to? No. In, uh, in that in that GP in that GP team, that is a the top of the list of who not to so, do that to. Once again, we've said this several times tonight. The kicking game comes back to hurt the Falcons as they give the Highlanders great field position from their own 43-yard line. If you're GP, I think you're last drive, you tried a couple knockout shots, now's the time. So Evans there in the flex, a little sweet toss there, but Carlos Orr not able to get anything. He actually loses yard, and it's getting chippy down here, and there goes the flag as I say it's getting chippy. I, this Falcon team's getting ready to lose 15 yards, I believe. I think there was a punch thrown. They may lose a player, too. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think a punch was thrown. Let's see here what we – let's – offsetting. So, apparently there wasn't a punch, but an offsetting uh, – Yeah. Offsetting call there. This is the point the officials have got to step in. Yep. This is a good place to stop play for a minute, get your captains, get your coaches together. Hey, guys, you got to play con with controlled aggression here. you got to finish this clean. It's too good a game to have a scrum or something like that at the end. If anybody else gets out of line, you're gone. So that's going to bring up second down and 11 as Evans goes into motion, and they stack heavy to the left. Looking, 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 and nothing is there. Ron, well, how about this Fulton Falcon defense? Fulton is coming out here, and they have – We've seen them get pushed around. We've seen GP yes. have some success. But these last couple drives, man, these guys are playing with their hair on fire. They believe they can win this game. And, and you're in a huge third down now. Brandon, let's pause for just a minute because I, 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 I want to say something to this officiating crew right now. They're going to have to start blowing the whistles because these kids are going to continue to block and fight, and it's going to get ugly if they don't take control of this game. Yeah, you you got you got to stop the when you see forward progress to stop. You got to blow the whistles. Yes. You can't, you're going to get somebody hurt if you don't start calling these things a little quicker. So we're at five and a half minutes with the uh, Highlanders nursing a three-point lead. Hammond's looking. He's got a man open. Whaley looks, continues to move. Oh, and he keeps his balance, and he may be gone to the house. And he, that is a severe county utility district touchdown. And I'm looking, Brandon, are there any flags on the field? The only ones I see are in the official's pocket, Ron. Whitman Whaley reservations for six. What a fantastic play. Uh, you know, he just he just looked as though he just ducked the corner out there defensively, which I believe was Smith, able to keep his balance and just keep motoring. And, boy, what a big play for these Highlanders. How is he that fast? Yes, uh, that's a great question. You are not supposed to be able to be that big, that quick, and that fast. And Whitman Whaley just continues to make big play after big play. So that pushes a lead back to nine, pending this extra kick by Giesling. Snaps down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So that's going to make it a 10-point game again with five minutes left in this period. What a great game we've had here. And once again, the question comes, can these Fulton Falcons respond? Um, let's go ahead and take a break. As they take a break, and we'll go ahead and acknowledge our sponsors. Once again, we tell you the score here as these Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders are up 28 to 18 over the Fulton Falcons. Stay with us for the exciting end of this game. And the Fulton Falcons who just will not die in the night air um, return the ball, set themselves up in good position. Molten hands to Johnson. Johnson keeps the legs mo moving and boy he finds space and he takes the ball down to GP territory all the way down to the 44 yard line. Albert Johnson Somebody has forgotten to tell this kid that this is supposed to be over because he, he just continues to make play after play after play. A big play by camp gun first down. I, 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 I love Albert Johnson. This, yeah. this young man has impressed the absolute heck out of me. He has looked fantastic tonight. So here we go. Fulton in the gun, three wide receivers to the top, one man down low. 
Molden awaiting the snap here. Man in motion. Molden takes it. Looks like it may be an option play. He's going to get a block. He's going to keep Johnson finds the space. Field. Stays down on his feet, and he goes all the way down to the Gallenberg Pittman 22 yard line. And we've said it already there is no quit in these Falcons. And, and they're just not going to go away. And Dexter Molden, we talked about at halftime, the changes that Fulton had to make. Dexter Molden had to make some plays with his arms. He had to make some plays with his legs. We've seen him throw two touchdown passes. We've seen him have several big runs. He has been as big a part as Albert Johnson in keeping the Falcons in this. To Molden back, surveying the field with a three receiver set. Got it. Looking and just broke up by the last minute by Tegan Avera, who says, I can not only run the football, I'm pretty good in coverage, too. Man, Tegan Avera, stride for stride there. If Avera does anything that have absolutely perfect coverage, that's another yes. Fulton touchdown. He jumps up and knocks that thing down. Outstanding and, play. And let's just say this, too, tonight, and I, I think this goes without saying. Dexter Molden's shown some growth tonight as quarterback. Oh, e enormous growth. This is one of those games you hate to see anybody lose. Yes. So Molden back. Thompson has some room, and he continues, and he's going to get the Severe County Utility District touchdown. Woo! Big run there by number 11, Raymond Thomas, as he's able to cut into the end zone. And, Ron, absolutely nothing pretty, nothing fancy. Just turn and hand it to Thomas right off tackle, and he hit the Jets, and that was all she wrote. And here we go again. With a two-point conversion. So what that does is that cuts this lead down for the Highlanders, down to four points, pending the two-point conversion. As Raymond Thomas comes back into the game and brings the play with him. They've not gotten one yet tonight, Brandon, I don't believe. No, nope, not yet. It looks like Thomas may be lined up at quarterback. Yeah, I think that's sort of a They're wildcat formation. Break, they didn't, didn't get, get that underway. Didn't get oh. the play. It's going to be a delay of game. They didn't get the snap called. And, you know, as they back this up, let's just acknowledge um, – tonight some of the issues that this Falcon team um, has had this year, not only using Marcellus Jackson, but also the, the death of Bob Black as well, who was just a legend at the Fulton program. And you know that hit them at a difficult time. Well, anytime they name the field after you, that says what you mean to a program. So they'll take over here at the eight as Thompson is back into the shotgun and waits it. It's, oh, and that's just immediately blown dead. So let's see. They may get another no. crack at this. I think it's going to be a, a procedure penalty. Uh, procedure penalty against Fulton, which what that's going to do is, well, let's see what this does. That, that whistle may just actually save them here on this play and just back them up further. Well, the issue with Thompson right there is the same thing we've seen all night. Uh, oh, the high snap, Dexter yeah. Dexter Molden has been fielding that. How Dexter Molden has not missed a snap all night, No. he deserves a lot of credit for that and for keeping the offense on schedule because he's been catching. That snap has been everywhere but in his hands yeah. tonight. He keeps catching, but he's not turning it over. But Molden's a bit taller than Thompson there. And I think that made a difference when it went over Thompson's head. So now these Falcons will start from their own 13 as they continue to get backed up for this two-point conversion. In a three-receiver set. Molden's got a man out there, and they got that two-point conversion. We have Dexter Lewis there on the corner of the end zone as he's able to work in back of the corner and just post him up, for lack of a better term. We have got a two-point game. 28-26. This one's going to come down to the wire. This is the third time now. It seems yes. like it's the third drive in a row. We're going, can GP close the door and put this Fulton team down? Because these Falcons are not stopping no. quitting at all. Nope. And we talked about it last time. It, it bears repeating again. You cannot, as the Highlanders, get too conservative here. I think you still have to keep the playbook open. Well, and if you look at what GP has been able to do, two drives ago you, you, you fizzled a little bit, you didn't get the big touchdown, but you took the shots. Then you score a touchdown on the long throw to, uh, to Whitman Whaley. He breaks it off, he scores. 
and, and right now, Whaley's the guy with a hot hand, but I, I said this a minute ago, said this on the last East Tennessee Spine kickoff. If I'm Fulton, I'm going for an onside kick. Well, here's the thing, right? I, nobody knows right now, including the Fulton Falcons, where this ball's going to be kicked. So you may as well try So you might as well try anything here because they've, they've pooched it. They've line-drived it. They, they line-drived it last time to Carlos Orr, which is a big mistake. You don't want to do that again. But we'll see where this one goes. doesn't matter. It's going to get called back. It's and probably a good thing because it went right to Carlos right Orr again. again. Carlos Orr did not even have to move his feet no. to hit him in the hands. If you're Fulton at this point, like I said, I am. Yes, I'm skipping the ball. It's a wet field. It didn't rain hard, but it rained enough. It's a wet field. You've had issues kicking all night. Skip this thing down into the middle of these big up backs and see if you yep. can get lucky with some chaos. And you know, I'm looking right now at some numbers. Graden Ware had better be ready. I know Luke Burkett plays a mean linebacker, but he better be ready too because, like I said, now this makes it even more difficult on him because it backs him up 10 yards and gives the Highlanders just a little bit more space to work. Not to mention in all likelihood this is going to spot the Highlanders near midfield again. And you can't kick this to Orr. He's entirely no. too dangerous. He can blow this game wide open. You can't kick to Orr. So here's a kick, and they did what should have been done from the beginning, a little scrib kick, and, and it's going to go out of bounds. Tegan Avera, really, really good high IQ, heads up play yes. there. Doesn't, he doesn't feel that lets it go, but he does exactly what you want to see a guy do. He's right behind it. He's hovering over it like a shortstop. That's short exactly stop. right. He's letting it roll and moving with it, and, it, and he's watching that Fulton coverage team, and if they got too close, he's just going to drop on it. And, and you know, Brandon, when you're the athletic player that Tegan Avera is, you know it's got to be tough to watch that ball dribble out of bounds. Well, Ron, you might know what that's like. I don't. I've, oh. I've, I've never been anything close to what uh, the kind of athlete Tegan Avera is, but I'll take your word for it. When I wanted to run the 40, they one time said that they worked in seconds, not minutes. So I'm not the person to be running the 40 well, either. I, I'm not that guy. Well, Ron, they told me they could time mine with a sundial. So. <laughs> we, we, you and I, when we went to the table, we were looking for the biscuit ball. We weren't talking 40. So that's going to back them up. You know, we'll just continue this. They'll be kicking from their own 10 here in a little if, bit. If I was GP, I would have taken that. I, I would yeah. not have given them another chance to onside no. this. The last thing you want right now if you're the Highlanders is a ball to bounce off. And here we go again. And pretty smart play right there. I think you'd have run with that. You got a little bit of space. You, you got a little bit of space. Get everything you can. Uh, I, I really, really, th there were a lot of special teams plays right there in a row between penalties and everything that I've questioned quite a bit, Ron. And if I if I was Fulton, like I said, I, I've said this over and over again, I'd be onside kicking every time if I didn't have a kicking game, especially yeah. on this field. Now, can you stop GP again? Can you contain him? Yep. Can you get off the field? So Ham is back, three receivers set to his left. Hands off to a bear, follows his blockers, looking for space, jukes a man out, and he's got some space, he gets another guy. Oh, why? Gosh, it looked like the sideline was available, and Avera just looks as though he dances out of bounds. I think he danced out of bounds. I, I need to see one of the offensive linemen. I think it may have been number 52. The pulling guard on that play for Gatlinburg Pentman sent a Fulton Falcon to the Lord. He got a hold of him and just ran him all the way over and gave Avera that hole. It was a, that's a lineman's dream block. So four receivers stack on the short side field. Avera again staying to the short side of the field, looking and weaving and is able to get down. I believe that's going to be a Clay Bowes campground first down. It is in fact, as they are picking up the markers and Gatlinburg Pittman will take over at the Falcon 43 yard line. Brandon, as we work under three minutes and 50 seconds. Ron, if you're the Highlanders, are you just trying to get out of Dodge at this point? I, I said it, but I said it before. I'll say it again. You still have nearly four minutes in this game, Brandon. You can't get too conservative. I think you still keep the, you run the football with Tegan Avera because you have him back there. But if you see something, a matchup that you like, don't be afraid to go to it. You got to trust those outstanding receivers they've got as well. So Hammond's back, Avera to his side, handoff to Avera. Once again, pushing the blocker in, in front of him up as they're uh, trying to find some open space, but 
you know, they continue to run to that short side of the field, and there's just not much room there, Brandon. Ron, here's the thing for me right now. I love the heart of Tegan Avera. This is a young man that doesn't have any quit in him. He's going to run as hard as he can every single handoff, but it's a wet field. It's a wet ball. If you're in here trying to push for an extra foot with six Falcons all raking for that ball, yes. a fumble blows this game open right here. It may just be better off to go down. So Fulton there calls the timeout, and we'll stay here on the on the field uh, with them, and that's going to also bring up um, second down and about eight uh, for these Highlanders as they look to continue to, to milk the clock as we are now under three minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, I believe the Falcons, it's hard to see the scoreboard as it's, it's sort of covered by a tree branch, but I believe that takes Fulton down to just one timeout. I believe that's correct, and this is going to be a this is a big, big, big couple of plays here for for the Falcons. You've got to get a stop, and you know it's going to be a Vera. So three receivers stack this time to the long side of the field. Hammond's looking, looking, looking. He's got a man open, and oh, wow. oh my goodness! Would or not want to have that back again? That is. And, and one of the things that we have seen about Carlos Orr, one of the things that defines him as a receiver is he is so extremely sure-handed. And I think I've seen him drop more balls tonight, tonight yes. th than he has in the past two. And when, when Coach Wagner brings his team together, they're going to see a lot of missed opportunities on the field tonight they wish they had back. Well, and Fulton's going to say the same thing. Both of these teams have made mistakes. Both of these teams have tried to overcome them. But, man, Carlos Orr has got to be yes. sick because that, that was a game ender. Third down and eight now as the clock is stopped on the incomplete pass. Hammond's looking, looking, looking. Has a receiver open, Whaley. And Whaley may score his second touchdown tonight. He does, in fact. And I do not see any touchdowns. And you know what? That probably in all likelihood didn't. You and I have talked about it already. Whit Whaley's our player of the game. Mama, it's that man again. Yes. That's, that's the third one tonight. What a game by Whitman Whaley. I don't know what he's got. It's got to be It's got to be getting close well, to 250 receiving yards. You break that down and you look and you have to admire on that particular play just the laser focus as he's locked in on that ball. He makes sure that he secures it and then turns up field. And I'm going to give a ton of credit to Brady Hammonds again because he got hit again on that throw and delivered so, it on the money. This extra point so critical because what it does, it pushes it back to a two-possession game. And I think they're what, – what are we doing here, guys? Uh, we're, we're currently <laughs> leaning to our producer asking if he's got some Send in the Clowns music ready to go right there because that was a – that one was a – that was an adventure. I'm still not really sure uh, what I, happened there. You know, I – these officials have been guilty of leaving the whistle in their pockets a little bit too long tonight and allowing these plays to just continue when you either got to blow it dead or let them play. Well, I, I've always been a big proponent of I would rather you go ahead and blow it dead. I know a lot of guys want to let them play, but I would blow it dead because in my mind, when you get those pileups like that, that's when guys get hurt. So big, big kick here for Gessling. Tam is down for the snap. Snap's good, kick's good. And boy, I tell you what, what a difference Gessling's made in this game is their ability to hit those extra points. It, it's the difference in the game. It is. So what that makes it now is 35-26. Yeah, we're, we're sitting at 35-26 after that Sevier County Utility District touchdown. Ron, I'm going to go back. I give you all the credit in the world. You said at the start of this game you were talking about how big a role special teams was going to play in this thing, and that was a place GP had a clear advantage. Boy, were you on it, because that is the difference in this game. So, gosh, I feel like I've put a record on the player, and I keep hitting the same spot over and over again. But once again, do these Fulton Falcons have one more drive left in them? Now, it's become much more difficult. Clock is working definitely against them as we work under two uh, minutes and 55 seconds. But... Um, I don't know, yeah. Ron. I'm, I'm to the point. I'm The only thing I'm betting against these Falcons on, on right now is, is anything in the kicking game. And I'm a little confused as Gessling's been able to punch it through the back of the end zone all night long. Why do you do that? Maybe you're hoping to get the turnover. But Maybe. Dexter Lewis there able to move it up. And all in all, I guess the difference between what I just said and what happened was a difference of eight yards. Well, so. and, and 
a difference of eight yards and a very tired Dexter Lewis. He ran about 75 yards for four there. Yep. So as we uh, approach the two minute mark here with these Falcons um, down by nine, and this has got to be hurry up mode right here because once again, just as a reminder, the Falcons are down to one timeout. Down one timeout, you're down two scores. You got to throw, you got to throw either first and downs out of bounds. play there by number 50 there for GP, who's able to get a hand on that ball, Grayson Ware, and is able to knock it down. Just great awareness by the Gatlinburg Pittman defensive line, Ware there. You're always coached. If you realize you're not going to get to the quarterback, get your hands up. I gave credit to Ware there. I actually believe that was Ben Reese on that play, was able to get up and knock it down. So that's going to bring up second down and 10. It does stop the clock. Moan's back, looking, moves up to his pressured. Is able to get in. Big stick. That is what you call a D. Cleeter. Woo! And who made that hit? Tegan Abera. We talked about a we talked about a Gatlinburg Pippen offensive lineman sending a Fulton Falcon to the Lord. Tegan Abera wanted in on that action. That is uh, yeah. that is the definition of a hospital ball from. Well, there's getting the air knocked out of you, and then there's Woo! getting the air and everything else knocked out of you. So Moan back, looking, looking, trying to find a man. Has a receiver, and this ball's going to be intercepted. And Brandon, this is going to end this game as Carlos Orr's got the ball. And he's still looking down the field. And I think we're going to get a block in the back, Brandon. But what that's effectively going to do for all purposes is in this football game. Well, and talk about some, some redemption for Carlos Orr. You, you can't quite hold on to the bobbling ball that would give you the first down to yes. end it. But you come back and get the interception to, to put this thing on ice finally. I am just... It, it breaks my heart that there yes. is a team that has to lose this game because both of these teams have played they have left it all on yes. the field and if i've got to play the fulton falcons going forward this season i'm like oh well they're zero and five you you read into their record at your own peril this is a good well, football team and you know I, I i'll say this too kudos to this uh fulton defensive line oh yes because one thing that they did tonight and we'll, we'll acknowledge uh the two cash brothers on that uh defensive line as as um well as Anderson and Wilson, but are uh, Anderson and Lopez. But what they've taken away from the uh, Highlanders tonight was the middle of the field. I yeah. mean, they forced them outside, 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 outside on that long because they just weren't going to give up the middle of the field. Tegan Avera still, though, that that's one of the biggest hits that we've seen yep. working games together. That was unbelievable, the shot he put on there. And it was perfectly clean. So Avera, as he's done on that long, sticks his hand in the back of one of his offensive linemen and just shoves forward for a gain of about four yards as the clock now will go under a minute and 40. Well, and Tegan Avera right there just... Tegan Avera's going to have to be a little careful here because this has been a chippy game, and after you lay that kind of shot, even though it was clean, even though it was a big hit, you've got to be careful because you may have some guys from Fulton who, after seeing their guy get blown up, if they see a chance to get something back, they may. So Coach McMillan there will call his final timeout as he pulls his team in and implores them, hey, guys, one more stop. And I'm trying to do the math in my head, Brandon, of what's going to be left on the clock here. And I think it's going to be somewhere, if they don't get a first down, I think we're going to be somewhere around the 42nd mark or so. You're um, you're gonna have to look for if you're if you're Fulton. It's almost got to be a defensive touchdown. It, it's almost gonna have to be a defensive touchdown. He has it. He has it. Yeah. It's almost gonna have to be a defensive touchdown for the Falcons to have an opportunity to, yes. to pull this off. So if you're Tegan Avera, again, two hands on the ball, high yep. and tight, cover the tip. No matter what, that ball didn't come out. We always talk about four points of contact. In this case, we may be looking for a fifth point. But regardless, you've got to make sure that that ball is tucked away and secure if you're Tegan Avera. And let's see what we do here. A GP may just be going to kneel this thing. Yeah, I don't. I was trying to do the math in my head, and I don't know that there's. Oh, I see what they're going to do here. Okay. Trying to get as many as yeah. many ticks off that clock as they can get. And I think I think Fulton was even a little bit surprised about that because it took them a while to realize what was going on there. Yep. So that's just under a minute and 25 seconds now, and that's going to bring up third down and eight. Like I said, I think if I'm doing the math, I think I think 
that the Highlanders may have to punt this ball back. We'll see. It's very close. I think the Highlanders are also saying it's a two-score game. We'll, yes. we'll take this thing down. We'll give you. If we'll back up and give you a score, but we're not going to leave you enough time to score twice. So Hammond's back. I anticipate doing exactly what he did last time, and we got a whistle. This is going to be a timeout by the Highlanders. I was going to say cannot be the Falcons because they're completely out of timeouts. So what so, it looks like GP's doing is putting uh, Avera back deep, putting Hammonds in a deep shotgun and almost max protect with, with the other nine guys. Yeah. Hold Fulton off as long as they can, and then when the Fulton guys start to finally come through, Hammonds is dropping to take a knee to get as much time off as he can. So here with just 52 seconds, I believe, 52 seconds left here in the game. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a close one Ron for how this thing ends. So once again, I think I'm not the only one who's trying to do the math on this Brandon. I think the weathers are trying to figure out exactly what GP's going to have left after this. But let me just remind you, unlike Fulton GP's got a good kicker. Yes, and that, again, I keep saying this, you nailed it. That has exactly been the difference in the game. So, Tegan Avera with a handoff, and he's able to drain the clock down as it continues, and I still, still think we're going to be about 10 seconds. Um, as I continue to watch the clock, down to 40 seconds now, and you know, Brandon, I'm not so sure that that clock didn't get a slow start right there. I think they were about three seconds in before the clock actually started rolling right there. Well, and the the unfortunate thing for the Highlanders is this is a home game, so you, you got your own yep. guys to blame for that. So with 12 seconds on the clock, what that's going to do is it's going to take their clock all the way down to about four or five seconds. So. Here, here's the question for you. Do you snap the ball and just try to run around and milk the rest of the clock off, or do you try to kick, kick it away? And I would say, if, if I'm Coach Wagner, seven seconds. Well, let me make sure. Nine seconds left, actually. So I'm just going to snap the ball. I'm going to run. Run all over the place and see if. Run back, get as much time off as I can, even if I wind up giving the ball back all the way back to Fulton, yeah. they're not going to have enough time to score twice. We need 13 seconds like uh, Mahomes. 13 seconds, is that what we need? No, no, we have no, about... I'm saying this to... our, our producers letting us know, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if Fulton wanted to pull a Patrick Mahomes, it's just 13 seconds to get yeah. back in it. Just real proud of you. So let's see how, yeah, let's see how much time they can drain off the clock right here. As you say, Brandon, two possession game. And um, well, these these are both two teams that need to go into the locker room with their heads held yes. high. What a game! I mean, this is this is the way you want to see high school football played. No quit out of these Falcons tonight for sure. And boy, let's, oh no! Yeah, let's not do that. Well, I'm not exactly sure why we do that. So recovers his own kick. And, now they, I think there's two seconds left, and actually I don't think there's that. Nope, it took. Oh, boy, that was one of the most awkward-looking things I think I've seen in high school football in a long time. That is that is a strange way to end a, a really, really, really good outstanding game. game. So let's talk as we give our final score tonight. These Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders are able to hold on and take down these Fulton Falcons, 35 to 26, as they improve. Um, on the season to, I believe it's five and one. Four and one. Four and one, while the Fulton Falcons drop to 0 and five on the season. But boy, a lot of heart out of Fulton tonight. How is this team 0 and five? Yeah. I, I, I am astounded. I don't understand how these Falcons well, are 0 and five. You know, you always, always talk about the opportunity to learn from um, your losses. And in, in this case, you know, disappointment there, but they're going to be able to take a lot of positives out of this game, including what you have to feel like is an improving quarterback and Dexter Molden, who just spread the ball all over the place and was able to throw quite well. But let's pause for just a moment and let's talk about our player of the game. I believe we've got a stat on that. Our player of the game um, for tonight with two touchdowns as we're waiting for that slide 
to come up, but we'll go ahead and, and share um, our Whit Whaley as our player of the game. It just seemed like tonight when GP needed him the most, he stood up well, and was counted time and time again. Ron, we talked before the game started. We said Gatlinburg Pittman is a team that goes as the stars go. Do the big stars come out? Do the big time players rise to the occasion? Whitman Whaley, the Wake Forest commitment. Again, we want to remind folks, I think over 200 receiving yards, three or four touchdowns tonight, and he's going to play linebacker yes. for the Demon Deacons. Whitman Whaley, our Andy's Frozen Custard player of the game, uh, absolutely just a stellar performance. He rose up over and over again, big play after big play left it all on the field in, in a tough game. If he's not on his A game, Gatlinburg Pittman doesn't win this game. Well, Harrison Plumley, who worked our camera, and has, if you've been with us this season, has also uh, been in color commentary with me as well. He's worked his way down to the field, and he's going to be uh, waiting to speak to Whit Whaley, and we'll also have some halftime stats for you as, as well, so do stay with us um, as we um, wait for Harrison to make contact with Whit Whaley, but while we're waiting, why don't we go ahead and take a short commercial break. We'll go back to our um, scoreboard in Milton. I think Harrison is located with Whaley, and we're waiting for um, that interview tonight. Whit Whaley, once again, with two touchdowns, and boy, was he big. And three. Three touchdowns. And boy, was he big tonight when they needed him the most as they were looking to close this game out. I can't help but think about the one play where he just ducked and ran. So... I believe Harrison's ready now with Whit Whaley, and we'll go ahead and throw it to Harrison, who's got Whit Whaley with him. Our Andy's Frozen Custard player of the game. Player of the game. This is exactly got the, that looks important. What kind of momentum? The three play like that. Um, we weren't clicking and all that, but after halftime, he gave us a little speech and clicked us in. Thought we were going into next week. You certainly look strong coming out in that second half. So did your teammates. You have an offensive weapon around you in uh, Carlos Ward, Tegan Avera. What does that mean to you to be around so many guys that are just as talented? Well, you certainly had a great game tonight. Uh, so once again, this is Whitman Whaley, our Andy's Frozen Custard player of the game. Thank you. So once again, Whit Whaley, our Andy's Frozen Custard player of the game. And Whit Whaley tonight with three touchdowns to help push the Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders to that nine point win tonight. But boy, what a game we were able to witness tonight. Oh, this was, this was as good as it, as it gets. This was everything you could ask for in a game to get to cover uh, just so hard fought by both teams. Uh, so thankful to, to get this opportunity, Ron. And again, we've, we've said this a few times this season, but what a fantastic facility here. I mean, just a beautiful facility here at Gatlinburg Pittman. But for uh, Ron Marble, I'll be joined tonight by Brandon Martin, and we'll tell you your final score once again from the Mountain Thicket here at Hammond Stadium. The Gatlinburg Pittman Highlanders 35 and the Fulton Falcons 26. Let me encourage everyone tomorrow to go root for those balls on Saturday and take your family to church on Sunday. Once again, Ron Marvel for Brandon Martin. This is your high school sports. Good night, everybody.